Hey guys welcome back. This is a story about what if Naruto had gamer leveling system. Naruto has always had video games to fall back on growing up while the rest of the village pretty much treated him like garbage. What happens when Naruto wakes up to find his life has become one of the video games he loves so much? Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like you can suggest a Naruto fanfiction with a link in the comments if you want me to read it. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic. So let's start. Chapter 11. Naruto woke up feeling pretty good. After the test the day before Naruto spent his evening working his off to get his bonus stat points. After that it was early to bed, he was wiped out after everything that day, talk about an emotional roller coaster. Naruto was out the door early to go catch up with Shikamaru and Choji. It didn't take long to find them both waiting for him outside the gate to the Nara compound. Morning guys, Naruto greeted them first. Morning, said Choji. Hey, said Shikamaru. You both gained a level, good job, said Naruto, seeing their name and levels above their heads. Nara Shikamaru LV 15 Akamichi Choji LV 14 inches, I thought that might have happened, groused Shikamaru. Why is that a bad thing? asked Choji. Because we couldn't distribute our own stat points. Anyway, invite us to group so we can hit up a training field before we have to meet our team, said Shikamaru. Naruto quickly formed the team. Which field today? We going back to 11? asked Choji. I took Sakura to training field 11 on team Ainma Day, she needed a bit of a wake-up call, explained Naruto. How did she take it? asked Shikamaru. Not very well, she almost quit as a shinobi afterwards. I talked her down but who knows how it will go in the long run. Did you tell her about the gamer thing? asked Choji. No, just went there to train, no grouping necessary. Anyway, what time are you supposed to meet your team? asked Shikamaru. 10 am, you, 9 am, Shikamaru answered. Okay, so we have about 3 hours. We could probably get through field 13 in the time but it would be close and I have no idea about 12. Let's at least check 12 out, said Choji. It can't hurt and we can always turn around and leave if it gets too late. I'm with Choji on this one, said Shikamaru. Alright, then let's get a move on before it gets to be too late. Without another word the trio left at full speed for training field 12 and whatever was there waiting for them. Training Field 12 A popular place to gather mushrooms, it is frequently infested with wild boar and in turn the boar are often hunted as a popular food source for village business. We're never bringing Ino here, stated Shikamaru. Naruto and Choji both snorted a laugh. Let's get to work, these pigs aren't going to defeat themselves, said Naruto, pulling a pair of kanai. Baby boar LVL 10 HP, 750 750 its CP. 400 400 it's a cute little baby boar. That will gore and eat you if you let it. Watch out for their charge and if you hear them squeal you'd better run because mama boar is never too far away. Troublesome, complained Shikamaru naturally. Okay, so we can't let them squeal or things will get way worse for us. So we need to kill them fast, asked Choji. Obviously, stated Naruto, vanishing a moment later only to reappear on top of a now dead pig with two kunai stuck into the back of its neck. At least they die quickly, said Choji, pulling a pair of kunai for himself. Want to see what a mama boar is? asked Naruto, grinning at his friends. Troublesome, said Shikamaru. Fine, let's see one. Naruto threw a shuriken at one of the baby boars hitting its side and drawing attention in its anger. The baby boar snorted a few times, pawing the ground as it prepared to charge. Naruto beaconed to it with one hand. As if by an unspoken agreement the two charged at each other. Naruto jumped over top of it, not wanting to risk getting gored by one of the tusks if he tried to roll past its side. As Naruto flew over it, he peppered it with shuriken, not really hurting it but definitely irritating it. Any more damage and it will die, commented Shikamaru, sitting back lazily and just watching. Choji meanwhile was looking around the base of one of the trees, occasionally bending over and picking something. Finally the little baby boar started to squeal quite loudly. A loud thundering noise followed and a much larger boar emerged from the brush. Mama boar LVL 15 HP, 1500 1500 CP, 500-500s you made mama mad and now you're in big trouble. Like her child, her charge is quite dangerous but don't ignore her stomp either. 
Right, Choji, you keep her attention. Naruto and I will work to kill her, ordered Shikamaru, drawing Choji's attention away from the tree he was messing with. Okay, said Choji, immediately throwing a handful of shuriken at her. The boar charged at Choji instantly. Choji raised his arms above his head and clasped them together when they suddenly grew to enormous size. He then hammered both fists downward into the boar's head slamming it into the ground. When the boar stood again it was very dizzy and confused, walking wobbly from side to side. Choji then grabbed one of her tusks in each hand and shoved her into the ground. I've got her held down, get her now. Naruto and Shikamaru then proceed to inflict as much damage as they were able to. Stabbing the beast over and over again. It was down almost half of its HP before it shook Choji off. Do it again, ordered Shikamaru, hoping it would work twice. Choji once again hammer it in the head but it didn't daze it at all and barely dropped it any HP. Instead it stomped on the ground hard shaking everything around it causing Choji to lose his footing and fall to the ground. Naruto seeing the boar was about to gore his friend acted fast. Cage bunch and no jutsu. He spawned dozens of clones which all immediately began to dogpile the boar, to give Choji some time to get his feet back and put some space. The boar shook and swung its tusks hard dispelling most of the clones, those that didn't proceeded to stab the pig repeatedly. Choji was able to scramble away from the boar and regain his footing. Nikuden Sensha, now, ordered Shikamaru. Choji nodded and did as he was told, plowing over the pig, destroying Naruto's clones but doing far more damage to the beast. Naruto seeing its HP flashing red leapt onto its back and drove two kunai into the back of its neck finishing it off. When it decomposed there was a leg remaining. Ham shank delicious Konoha wild boar ham shank. Cooking ingredient, it's a ham shank, for cooking, said Naruto, one eyebrow raised in confusion. Ham shank, asked Choji, drooling excessively as he stared at it. You can have it, said Naruto. We'll get more, that mama pig was worth a lot of experience so I want to spawn as many of her as we can. Yada, shouted Choji, running forward to grab the ham shank. So for the next hour that's what they did, spawn mama boars and kill them. He and Choji both ended up with 10 each. And that's when the boss showed up. Papa boar LV 18 HP, 2200 2200 CP, 1000 1000. You made Papa angry, you won't like Papa when he's angry. Watch out for his breath, it's a bit fiery. The boar snorted causing a few small jets of flame to shoot from its nose. This is not going to end well for us, said Shikamaru, his shadow stretching immediately and grabbing hold of the boar. Cage Buki no Jutsu, shouted Naruto, letting his teammates know to stay clear as the boar was pelted with hundreds of kanai, most not even penetrating the thing's thick hide. That didn't work so good, said Naruto, seeing its HP barely drop. Use explosive notes, ordered Shikamaru, struggling to hold the beast. Naruto ran in and started laying notes all over the thing, finally jumping back and activating them. Katsu. The boar's health dropped a good chunk but not nearly enough. Its hide was still way too thick to do any significant damage. Any ideas? asked Choji. Keep it busy, I'm thinking, said Shikamaru, his hold on it finally undone. Naruto and Choji took turns taunting it back and forth and peppering it with a little damage here and there but it was still over half health. Shikamaru spent the time studying the beast, it was big and its hide was thick. They just weren't able to do enough damage, that's when Shikamaru saw its underside was untouched, looked very soft, very tender, and most importantly vulnerable. Guy, you need to attack its stomach. That's where it's vulnerable. Naruto ducked under a jet of flame from the boar and tried to slash at it but did almost no damage. And how do we do that? Naruto, attack the two legs on its right side. Choji, once Naruto weakens those legs you need to charge and hit its left side with as much power as you can muster to try and roll it, once we do that, attack that belly like your lives depend on it because they just might. You got it, said Naruto and Choji at once. Naruto spawned a handful of clones and had them help him in alting the legs, managing to make them bleed and the boar's body on that side to sag. Now, Choji, ordered Shikamaru. Choji charged in, his right leg swinging backwards as he got near. His right leg swung forward and just before it hit it grew to a size comparable with the boar itself. After the impact of the giant foot, the boar rock then fell to its side just as Shikamaru planned. 
Shikamaru's shadow instantly latched onto it. Kill it fast while I've still got chakra to hold it. Naruto and Choji immediately attacked without mercy. Naruto and his clones stabbing and slicing while Choji would hit it with Nikuden Sensha grinding into it until finally the beast huffed one last gout of flame before going still. The trio all breathed a giant sigh of relief when it finally started to decompose. Congratulations. Your level has increased by one. Your teammate Akamichi Choji's level has increased by one. And a level, you too Choji. Ryo 2250 high grade thick leather 2, leather commonly used in shinobi clothing. Crafting material. Kaden, Hidama no Jutsu, skill scroll. Woohoo, shouted Naruto, excitedly. A skill scroll. Really, that's kind of cool, said Choji. What skill? Kaden, Hidama no Jutsu, Naruto answered. Okay, so how do we split up the loot? Asked Shikamaru. That, is a good question, said Naruto. I mean, obviously we all get an equal share of the money so that's 750 ryo each. And me and Choji both got the ham earlier so I think you should take your pick. I didn't expect you to be so reasonable, said Shikamaru, frowning. You should take the skill scroll, see if you can learn it first. Naruto nodded. You have obtained the skill scroll, Kaden, Hidama no Jutsu. Would you like to learn the skill? Naruto tapped the, confirm, why? You cannot learn this skill. Required. Kaden affinity, well that s, what the, demand Naruto. It says I need to have a Kaden affinity. I wonder. Dot dot quote. Mumbled Shikamaru. Can I try? Naruto shrugged and handed him the book. Sure. Shikamaru blinked in surprise when he was prompted to learn the skill. He was more surprised when the book went up in flames and smoke. You have a Kaden affinity, asked Naruto. Apparently, I didn't even know I had one, said Shikamaru. Open your skills list, said Naruto, curious as to what his friend's skills were listed at. It says I do have a Kaden affinity but it's only level 1 with zero experience. If you just created it then how come I wasn't able to? Questioned Naruto. Troublesome, Shikamaru complained, sighing aloud. I think we need to do some more research into chakra affinities. I have the books for it at home, I haven't really been able to read into them too much yet, added Naruto. It will have to wait, said Shikamaru, checking the time. We've got to hit the road and meet our sensei and Ino. Okay guys, I guess Choji and I can each take one of the skins, said Naruto, collecting the leather and handing one to Choji. Oh, before I forget, said Choji. I found a bunch of mushrooms earlier. They are a really good cooking ingredient. He then held them out to his friends. Cool, said Naruto. But you keep those, I'll try to collect some myself since I still have time before meeting my team. Alright, see you later, Naruto, said Choji, obviously happy with his recent food pickups. Your team has disbanded. Naruto was then left to his own devices in that field. So, mushroom hunting, huh? Naruto went toward the tree he saw Choji at earlier. He could see around the base were several broken stems from where they had been plucked. Naruto moved on to check another tree where he saw a bunch of mushrooms. Shiitake mushroom This mushrooms has a soft, spongy quality, producing a woodsy, meaty flavor and texture when cooked. Cooking ingredient. Anoki mushroom This mushroom has a mild, delicate flavor that is complemented by a slight crunch. Cooking ingredient. Naruto picked the mushrooms, moving to several different trees as he went. He ended up with 16 shiitake and 7 anoki. He didn't have any recipes for them but a quick trip to the library should help him out, same with the ham shank. Naruto didn't stay very long as he was due to meet his team for training and a mission. Naruto arrived a few minutes early to the meeting though once again he was the last to arrive other than Kakashi. Sasuke looked very displeased to see Naruto arrive, acknowledging his arrival with little more than a glare. Sakura looked between them nervously, expecting a fight to break out, especially with the way things were left unsettled at the test. Thankfully, Kakashi arrived before they could come to blows. So, first today we're going to go over some things. Starting with the obvious. Sasuke, we need to discuss your unwillingness to be teamed with anyone. Would you care to explain yourself? They will just slow me down, stated Sasuke. Tell me more, said Kakashi, staring Sasuke down a bit. After a short stare down between Kakashi and Sasuke, the youth finally answered. I won't be responsible for their safety. They'll get themselves killed and put me at risk because of it. 
I see so you're worried they will get themselves killed, translated Kakashi. HN, grunted Sasuke, refusing to acknowledge Kakashi's words. I'll take that as a, yes, you're absolutely right, Kakashi sensei. You're such a genius, please teach me to be just like you. Kakashi retorted before looking to Sakura and Naruto. What do you think about that Sakura? Sakura looked embered. He's not wrong but he's not completely right. I'm not very strong but I won't get in his way. Sasuke, what do you think? Asked Kakashi. She's weak, she even said so. I don't want to watch someone die again, he stated angrily. Ah, now we get to the real root of the issue. Care to elaborate further, Sasuke? Sasuke snarled at the man. Gota, I don't have to explain anything. True, you don't have to but you should. Anyway, Sakura, what are you going to do about Sasuke's issue? Get stronger, so strong I can protect him. Good answer, Sasuke, anything to say about that? Do what you want, he said, not daring to look at her. Good enough for now, said Kakashi. Now for you, Naruto. What do you think? He needs to apologize for his bull, said Naruto, clearly leaving no room for less. You can go to two, said Sasuke rudely. Mumbled Kakashi thoughtfully. Sasuke, as much as you may not wish to acknowledge it you were in the wrong yesterday. You do owe your teammates an apology, a sincere one. Naruto is significantly stronger than you seem to think he is so I'll make a deal with you. You will spar with him, when it's done you will decide if you should apologize to him or not. Any rules? Asked Sasuke, smirking slightly now. No defeat blows, otherwise go for it and have fun. Naruto was very tempted to protest having the fight at all but the opportunity to fight Sasuke again and not just in a taijutsu spar where the hole tended to dominate was just too good to pee up. Fine, I'll kick his. Quest alert make peace by fighting it out. Beat Sasuke in a spar and settle your differences. Fight Sasuke to knockout. Completion award. 5000 EXP Sasuke's apology. Increase reputation with Uchiha Sasuke. Completion failure. 1000 EXP decrease reputation with Uchiha Sasuke. HN, you wish, Dobi. Naruto's eyebrow twitched slightly at the insult. He was really starting to dislike being called, Dobi. Naruto used, observe, again on Sasuke, he hadn't checked the whole stats in a few days. Name. Uchiha Sasuke title. Genin plus 10 increase to experience gain, level. LV19 next level. 24.65% affiliation. Konoha HP. 700 700 CP. 740 740 its STR. 45 VIT. 70 DEX. 89 INT. 74 WIS. 46 luck. 1. Status. Unawakened Sharingan plus 2, Dex and plus 3, Int and plus 1, Wisp per level, Avenger plus 25% to all stats when attacking Uchiha Itachi, Firebug, minus 15% cost to Kaden Jutsu, plus 10 damage to Kaden Jutsu, Uchiha Sasuke is the last loyal surviving member of the infamous Uchiha clan. Well known for their Dujutsu the Sharingan which has allowed them to excel as shinobi in the field. His past is clouded by the pain and misery of losing his family so much that vengeance is all that remains to him. Nothing had really changed which was to Naruto's benefit. His best hope for beating Sasuke was once again to outlast him. Naruto could take more damage, the trick would be to push enough damage back on him to win the fight and avoid taking any major damage like getting lit up by a giant fireball. A giant fireball like the one that was currently heading right for him. Naruto's eyes widened for a moment before he swow off in a blur of motion, easily avoiding the fireball. Somehow, Naruto missed Kakashi call for a start to the fight. Naruto rushed around behind Sasuke, punching him sharply in the kidneys causing the boy to wince but still counter with a spinning kick into Naruto's ribs causing him to back away. Naruto smirked when he saw their HP dropped by almost the same amount. Still, in overall percentage loss, Sasuke suffered more damage. Next was a flurry of kicks and punches being exchanged in which Sasuke managed to come out mostly on top. Even still, Naruto wasn't deterred. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, shouted Naruto, spawning dozens of clones. Now, Naruto knew with his gamer ability he didn't have to yell the name of the technique but this was a point of pride. An A-ranked Kinjutsu. He'd be ed if he didn't use it and make sure that heard what it was. 
Sasuke's eyes widened slightly when he ignored the first clone thinking it was an illusion only to get punched in the face by it sending him rolling across the field. As he finally got his feet back under him sent a flurry of shuriken into the horde of clones, defeat a few but mostly being ineffective. It did however give him time to fire off a giant fireball into them obliterating most of them. Naruto smirked even as his clones were obliterated by the flames of destruction. Sasuke mimicked the smirk thinking he'd had the fight in the bag now. Until he felt someone latch onto his arms and legs, lifting him up and slamming him bodily into the ground, forcing the air from his lungs painfully. He barely managed to register Naruto dropping bodily toward him from the air above him. Naruto's knees impacted Sasuke's stomach with a solid, thwap, sound. Naruto then drove a hard punch into Sasuke's face knocking him out. Winner, Naruto, said Kakashi. Good fight, smart strategy, well done. Naruto couldn't help grinning at the praise from his teacher. Feel better after getting that out of your system, eh? Asked Kakashi. Yes, yes I do, said Naruto, standing off of Sasuke. He dispelled his clones and brushed the dirt off. Now, as soon as he apologizes I'll be ready to work. Kakashi chuckled and shook his head. So long as you can move forward. Kakashi then turned to Sakura. Why don't you try and patch him up? I doubt he'll be feeling overly generous toward me and Naruto right now. Sakura nodded and ran forward. Walk with me, Naruto, said Kakashi, motioning for the boy to follow him. Okay, so what do you need? Asked Naruto, joining Kakashi a ways away from Sasuke and Sakura. Would you mind telling me what you can observe from Sasuke and Sakura, yourself as well, just the status effects for now. The more I know the better I'll be able to east you in training. Sasuke's path is pretty well set as an alt fighter or in your gaming terms, DPS. Naruto studied Kakashi for a minute before nodding his accent. Naruto status. Uzumaki, plus 10 oh, bit, plus 10 oh, int, plus 50% experience to Fuenjutsu, skill, Kayubi Jinchuriki, plus 100, HP and plus 100, CP per level, prankster, minus 5% reputation gains, plus 5% experience to trap, skill, plus 5% experience to stealth, skill. Sasuke status. Sharingan plus 2, Dex and plus 3, Int and plus 1, Wisp per level, Avenger, plus 25% to all stats when attacking Uchiha Itachi, Firebug, minus 15% cost to Kaden Jutsu, plus 1 oh damage to Kaden Jutsu, Sakura status. Perfect control plus 15 Wisp per level, minus 50% cost to all Jutsu, Fangirl, minus 25% decrease to experience gain. Minus 50% decrease to bonus stat gain, book smart, plus 10 int per level, minus 75% CP, plus 25% increase to skill experience. Hummed Kakashi in thought. What are you thinking for Sakura? Asked Naruto, his curiosity getting the better of him. Either Genjutsu or Iryojutsu, with her limited chakra pool and perfect control there isn't much else I can do for her, especially not with that, fangirl, status affecting her. Cool, so a healer or support role, said Naruto, appreciating it. Kakashi paused as he realized Naruto was still there. Ah, if you could keep that to yourself for now I'd appreciate it. Naruto considered it for a minute before answering. Okay, I'll keep it quiet but what do you see for me? I mean, with my Jinchuriki status my chakra pool and hit points are stupid high so I could be a shield typer, DPS, depending on how I spend my points. I just don't know which way to go. Let me think about your situation for a while. Your gamer ability makes things much more complicated allowing you to pursue multiple paths, explained Kakashi. For now, let's get back to your teammates. Sasuke should be awake by now. Naruto nodded and followed Kakashi back. When they arrived, Sasuke looked even unhappier than before the fight. Now then Sasuke, still think Naruto will hold you back, asked Kakashi. Sasuke sneered. Fine, he won't hold me back, happy now. Are you ready to apologize to your teammates? Asked Kakashi. Sasuke mumbled something none of the heard very well. I'm sorry, didn't quite catch that, said Kakashi, encouraging Sasuke to speak up. Sasuke glared at Kakashi. I'm sorry I underestimated you. Try again, said Kakashi, it was not the apology he expected. Sasuke growled, more than a little unhappy. I'm sorry for treating you so poorly. Still not what I'm looking for, ordered Kakashi. Sasuke, 
Think about what your brother did to you then think about what you did to your teammates yesterday. Then try again. Sasuke's eyes widened for a moment before they were flooded with rage. I'm nothing like him. Don't ever compare me to him again. Are you so different, Sasuke? Demanded Kakashi, his voice no longer friendly. What did he do? What did you do? He betrayed me, my whole family. He murdered them all and for what? To test himself, that's what? To prove he was better than all of them, better than everyone in the village, screamed Sasuke. And what did you do yesterday? What were your actions? Demanded Kakashi. You betrayed your team, people you need to be able to trust and people who need to be able to trust you. If that had been a mission and I was an enemy shinobi, you as good as murdered them by putting the mission over your comrades. That's what we're taught in the academy. Sasuke tried to defend his actions, his eyes wide and slightly panicked. Let me tell you something I was taught years ago, those who abandon the mission are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are lower than trash. What your brother did made him lower than trash. What you did yesterday, made you lower than trash. Right now I don't see any difference between you and your brother. It's up to you to change and you can start by apologizing to your teammates the right way. Kakashi started his speech rather angry but by the end bite in his tone faded. Sasuke suddenly seemed a bit defeated. He wasn't used to losing and despite having just lost a fight to Naruto of all people it was the argument with Kakashi that impacted harder. It didn't sit well with him. Had he really become like his brother? Wasn't everything he'd done to make sure someone like his brother never happened again? How had he lost sight of that? Was Kakashi right? Well, asked Kakashi, snapping the young man out of his reverie. I'm sorry, said Sasuke softly. I betrayed your trust and refused to cooperate with you as a teammate should have. If this had been a real mission my selfishness would have gotten you both killed. For that I am sorry. It won't happen again. But don't either of you dare slow me down or fall behind. I will not be responsible for your deaths. Apology accepted, said Naruto, no hint of sarcasm or joke involved. But the same goes for you, don't slow me down or fall behind. I won't always be there to save your... Sasuke smirked a little. Deal. Boys, complained Sakura. Okay, now that we've settled that issue, let's get to work. We have a wonderful D-ranked mission to get to. Your fists did the talking. Completion awarded. 5000 EXP, Sasuke's apology, plus 100 to reputation with Sasuke Uchiha. Kakashi led the trio to the Hokage Tower where he collected a mission scroll leaving his team to wait outside the office. Quest alert D-ranked mission, beat them weeds. Pull all weeds in the Koyabano's garden in less than 2 hours. Completion award. 1000 EXP 1500 Ryo increase reputation with Konoha completion failure. 100 EXP decrease reputation with Konoha when Kakashi came back out waving a mission scroll detailing exactly the same request as the mission Naruto hung his head in disappointment. A chore, D-ranked missions were just chores lazy people didn't feel like doing. Naruto wanted to scream in protest and annoyance but he had no choice in the matter. Plus it was basically free experience and money. Okay team, let's go, said Kakashi with false bravado, trying to encourage his team at least a little bit. Chapter 12. Naruto was not pleased with his first D-ranked mission. Honestly he thought it was some straight up bull. It was even more obnoxious with the nasty old woman glaring at him the entire time he was doing the work. He tried to speed up the mission by using clones but Kakashi quickly put an end to that notion. Looks good team, well done, said Kakashi, surveying the final results of their labor. I suppose this will do, said the old woman, the widow Koyabano. She couldn't help but give Naruto one last dirty look before signing Kakashi's form and going back inside her home. What a, exclaimed Naruto, his irritation showing clearly on his face. Ma, Ma, Naruto, no need to speak so poorly of our clients, chided Kakashi. She wasn't glaring at you for the entirety of the mission, retorted Naruto, his displeasure still clear. Anyway, let's get a move on. We need to turn in the mission then it's time for a bit of team training. Kakashi lead them to the tower and turned in the mission. Mission accomplished D rank. Completion awarded. 1000 EXP, 1500 Ryo, plus 5 to reputation with Konoha. Your level has increased by one. Kakashi then led them back to the training field. So, these books are for you to study in your own time, 
I fully expect you to learn them front to back inside of a month, Kakashi explained as he handed each of them a book. He gave Naruto a look warning him not to burn the book in front of his teammates. You've obtained skill book, Genin Team Tactics. Would you like to learn the skill? Naruto tapped the, decline, end button. He could learn the book once he got home. For now, we are going to start with some chakra control exercises, ordered Kakashi. I'm going to teach you to climb trees. But we already know how to climb trees, protested Naruto. Not without using your hands, said Kakashi. He then started to walk up a tree in the clearing. Cool, shouted Naruto in excitement. So, the idea is to channel chakra to your feet and use it to stick to the tree so you can walk up it. How does this help chakra control? Asked Sakura. Channeling chakra to your feet is one of the hard places in the human body to do so. Controlling exactly how much you use will make controlling it for jutsu easier so you don't waste as much, explained Kakashi. This isn't something that once you learn it will make you a master of it. The more you practice it the better your control will get. So, everyone pick a tree and get to work. As he finished he threw a kunai down in front of each of them. Naruto picked his up and sprinted to the closest tree. He put a foot against it, channeled a little chakra, took one step up and fell on his head. You might want to give it a bit of a running start at first, recommended Kakashi. Naruto frowned at his sensei. You couldn't have said that before I started. But you seemed so eager to get started, protested Kakashi, trying to look completely innocent and failing miserably since he was actively reading his porno not really paying much attention to his team. Naruto closed his eyes and breathed in and out trying to clear his head. Naruto rolled backwards from the tree and up to his feet. He focused chakra to his feet again and took a step only to pull up a large chunk of dirt and trip him up when he took a step forward. Too much chakra, said Kakashi, still not really paying too much attention. Naruto glared at the man, trying to shake the dirt off his foot. So Naruto tried again but with a bit less chakra. This time he made it five steps up the tree before losing his grip. Better, try to keep the chakra flow even. Too much and you'll break the bark causing you to lose your grip. Too little and you'll s right off, explained Kakashi, seeing Sasuke have the same problem. This is easy, said Sakura from the top branch. Well, looks like you have good control. You should look into learning some genjutsu or iryojutsu, suggested Kakashi. But for now, keep working on it you need to improve your stamina. Your control is only so good because you have so little chakra to control. Sakura nodded and started running up and down the tree. After about 10 times she had to rest. Naruto went back to grinding at it. Eventually he'd get the hang of it and he'd be racing up and down the tree like it was second nature. For now, he'd take just getting a step further than his previous attempts as progress. After about two hours of working at it, Kakashi called the team's day over and released them to do as they pleased. Naruto chose to stay and work on tree climbing. Sakura went home to rest. Sasuke also left but didn't say where or why he was going, he just left. It must have been close to midnight when Naruto finally got it down. A special skill has been created through a special act. By using your chakra to take hold of surfaces, a skill to improve chakra control, tree climbing, LVL1 has been created. Tree climbing, PIV, LV10.00% 10 CP for 5 seconds by using your chakra to stick to surfaces you can now move more freely and better use your chakra. Pivly increases with 1% Pivly reduces excess CP lost from using too much chakra by 1%. That's some bull, all of that and it barely does for my control. What the you stupid game? Complained Naruto very loudly. Naruto was annoyed and now very tired. He'd worked all day to learn this crap and for all that effort this was all he got. That's it, I'm going home to bed. You have slept in your bed. HP and CP are fully restored. Naruto woke up feeling refreshed from the night before if still a little annoyed by the results of the chakra control exercise. Even if it was a bad ability it still ed that it did so very little for him. Naruto sat up and opened his inventory and pulled out the Genin Team Tactics skill book. You've obtained skill book Genin Team Tactics. Would you like to learn the skill? Naruto hit the confirm white button. You cannot learn skill. Requires. Wis 40 Naruto groaned in irritation. 
he quickly calculated that he could gain two more bonus stat points through playing Shogi with Shikamaru which meant he needed to put in four points into Wiz to be able to learn it after he gained the bonus stat points. Naruto put the book away and added the points. Then he sighed. Time to get underway. Naruto went through his morning routine then headed out the door. Naruto met up with Shikamaru and Choji once again but this time they focused on training for bonus stat points in the little time they had. Thankfully, Shikamaru was more than willing to put the time in playing Shogi. He earned his points having played the longest games yet against Shikamaru. Sadly he didn't have enough time to work on any other points but he was happy all the same. As soon as he got his two points he pull out the skill book again. You've obtained skill book, Genin Team Tactics. Would you like to learn the skill? Naruto hit the button. You've obtained the skill, Genin Team Tactics. Genin Team Tactics PIV LV 30.00% Team Formations, Ambush Points, Counter Ambush and many other tactics. Pivly increases in 12.5% Pivly increases with 12.5% Naruto met up with his team at the Hokage Tower, got another D-ranked mission. This time walking some of the Inazuka dogs. This was followed by more running up and down trees. Sasuke was still struggling with it. Sakura was worn out by the time she finished about 10 laps. Naruto was just getting skill experience. However the three levels he gained to his tree climbing was worth all the effort. For every level he gained it increased the PIB benefits by 1% each. After the team broke up, Naruto headed back to the academy training field where he ran into Shikamaru and Choji both hard at work which Naruto was only too happy to join in on. Well, according to my stats I've hit my cap. You guys, asked Naruto. Yeah, a while ago, said Shikamaru. Me too, said Choji. So now what? It's a bit late to try a training field. You got those books on affinities still, asked Shikamaru. Yeah, they are back at my place though. Naruto answered, unsure if his friends would want to come to his place. All right, let's go, said Shikamaru. We should get some food on the way there, suggested Choji. Yeah, Ichiraku Ramen here we come, cheered Naruto, smiling from ear to ear. The trio were soon happily sitting in Naruto's rundown apartment eating noodles. No offense, Naruto, but your place is kind of a hole, said Shikamaru. Stupid landlord won't fix anything. It's cause of the Ed Kaiubi, explained Naruto. But my reputation with him has been improving. When the gamer thing first started he hated me now he's just unfriendly. A few more months and he should hit neutral then maybe I can get the to fix some around here. What did the reputations do for you anyway? Asked Choji. I'm not completely sure. But like at Higurashi, I started at neutral but when I hit friendly the old man gave me a discount on his goods, and a bigger discount when I got to honored. What does it say about me and Choji? Asked Shikamaru. Let me check, I don't really pay much attention to it. I just know I get a lot representative from some of the stupid quests, not that it ever seems to do me much good. So let's see, reputation. Naruto opened the menu audibly so the guys could maybe see or if not just know that he'd opened it. It says you're both honored with me. Shikamaru is 1200 out of 10,000 and Choji is 150 out of 10,000. What about the other rookies? Sakura and Sasuke are both unfriendly with me but they've been getting better because we're on a team and stuff. Hanada is honored 6,500 out of 10,000, no idea why that's so high and every time I try to talk to her she pees out or runs away. Kiba and Akamaru are both friendly with me. Ino and Shino are both neutral. Interesting, said Shikamaru. You have any idea why it's important? It could have to do with the team, system or something to do with training maybe. I'm not really sure, said Shikamaru. Time will tell. Anyway, let's see those books. Naruto closed the window and went over to his small bookshelf and grabbed three books he'd gotten from the library, setting them on the table. Take your pick, said Naruto grabbing the top book titled simply, The Elements. Shikamaru took the next, Affinities in You, while Choji reluctantly took the last book, Baka's Guide to Chakra Affinities. Naruto, trade me, said Choji. Naruto shrugged and swapped. He thought the, Baka's, was actually the easiest of them to read. Earth Water Fire Wind Lighting Earth Water Fire Wind Lighting. Repeat that aloud at least a hundred times. When it comes to the basics of the elements that simple pattern establishes most of the ground rules. Now, 
I'm sure you're asking, why does that establish most of the ground rules? The answer is simple, when it comes to affinities there is always a strength and a weakness. Earth is strong against water but weak against lightning. Now, can you tell me about the rest of them? Is strong against but weak against water. Is strong against but weak against earth. Is strong against but weak against fire. Is strong against but weak against wind. Naruto frowned. Is it really this simple? What? Asked Shikamaru, looking up from his book. Huh, oh sorry, I was talking to myself. So, what's so simple? Well, the elements, they all have a weakness and strength. This book spells it out very directly right at the start. Like fire is strong against wind but weak against water. Isn't that common sense? Asked Choji. I guess that is but what about earth being weak against lightning, did you know that? I guess not, said Choji. Does it saying anything about not being able to learn a certain element? Asked Shikamaru. I haven't gotten that far yet, said Naruto, scratching the back of his head slightly embered. Troublesome, said Shikamaru, closing his book and setting it aside. Come share that book, it's got to be far less complicated than the mess that moron was trying to spell out. I should have known better than to read a book written by an Uchiha. That was written by an Uchiha? Asked Choji, setting his book on top of Shikamaru's. This one was too, he started out with all kinds of chakra equations and formulas. Yeah, let's just share the, Baka's, book, reiterated Naruto. Now, most people only have one primary affinity but that won't stop you from learning all of the affinities, but if you choose to go that route then prepare to work you're often probably never master any of the affinities. There is a reason most shinobi never learn more than one or two affinities, a primary and a secondary. We'll talk more on secondary affinities later, for now let's focus on primary affinities. Your primary affinity is that which you most readily align with. This doesn't mean you will instantaneously be the strongest of ninjutsu user just for knowing your affinity and knowing a few jutsu using that affinity. Also, don't think that just because you were born in Hai no Kuni that you will instantly have a fire affinity or that if you come from Kei's no Kuni you will creating tornadoes for the fun of it. Where you're born doesn't mean a thing when it comes to your affinity. That said, there is an ounce of truth to the statement, Hai no Kuni has more fire affinities than not just as Kei's no Kuni has more wind affinities than not. Now, to find out your affinity you will need a sheet of chakra affinity paper, purchasable at most shinobi outfitters. Once you've procured the necessary papers you'll need to simply channel a little chakra into it and see what happens. If you have an earth affinity the paper will crumble to dust. An earth affinity indicates you have a strong base and will stand firm. Earth techniques are very popular for defensive ninjutsu and powerful taijutsu augmentation. Though don't be fooled, there are plenty of powerful and highly damaging ninjutsu. If you have a water affinity the paper will soak through. A water affinity indicates you have a fluid, loose stance and will often flow around obstacles in your path. Water techniques are well balanced between defensive techniques that can trap opponents as well as push them away to create much need separation and destructive offensive skills that can wash away an entire village. There is also the rare water affinity user that is able to use it in Iryojitsu. If you have a fire affinity the paper will burn to ash. A fire affinity indicates you have a short temper and strong pions. Fire has very little in the way of defensive techniques but excels in destructive power that is not easily controlled. If you have a wind affinity the paper will cut apart. A wind affinity indicates you are aloof and easily distracted, but don't let that fool you as you are at the top of the food chain when it comes to combat. Wind is often called the affinity of combat, used in close to midrange fighting. Wind techniques can be used to both push and cut and defensively to redirect. If you have a lightning affinity the paper will crinkle. A lightning affinity indicates you are cold and unpredictable. Lightning techniques can be used to great effect in causing damage and enhancing one's abilities to devastating effect. Isa should have a fire affinity, protested Naruto, sitting back from the book. Wind, said Shikamaru and Choji at the same time. You think? Choji nodded and grunted. Troublesome, probably, but that doesn't explain why you couldn't learn that Kaden technique, said Shikamaru, rubbing his temples. Well, wind is opposed to fire, said Choji with a shrug. I doubt it's that simple. I'm pretty sure fire isn't my primary affinity either, said Shikamaru. I'm guessing I'm either water or earth and water is directly opposed to fire. 
Maybe he has a super strong wind affinity or maybe the Kyubi is messing with him, suggested Choji. All possible but we really need to look into it more, said Shikamaru. We should go to Higurashi's tomorrow and get some chakra paper. Maybe you guys can get that weekly quest with me this time now that we can group, offered Naruto. I'm game, said Choji. I need to get some new armor anyway. Maybe you can bring that leather. Higurashi might be able to do something with it, suggested Naruto, trying to be helpful. Worth looking into, said Shikamaru, yawning. It's probably time we head out. Let's meet up tomorrow at Higurashi's around say 4 p.m. See you too there, said Naruto. Naruto couldn't help but feel excited as he eventually dozed off that night, his pre-sleep thoughts filled with unleashing untold elemental power on his enemies, Sasuke bowing down to him, Sakura fawning over him, getting the Hokage's hat. It was a good thought to fall asleep too. You have slept in your bed. HP and CP are fully restored. Naruto raced through the day, only too excited to meet up with his friends. It was another crappy mission, this time babysitting some kids but the experience and money was welcome all the same. Naruto met up with Shikamaru and Choji just outside of Higurashi's, he was a few minutes late but they didn't seem to mind his being a little tardy but two more levels to tree climbing was worth it. Tree climbing PIV LB6 12.87% 10 CP for 5 seconds by using your chakra to stick to surfaces you can now move more freely and better use your chakra. Pivly increases with 6% Pivly reduces excess CP lost from using too much chakra by 6%. Hey guys, sorry I'm late, said Naruto, greeting them right away. It's only a few minutes, no big deal, said Shikamaru. Anyway, let's head inside. Naruto followed in behind the pair but just before he entered he paused. All through the market district were the merchants he knew only too well. Except they all had, above their heads like they had quests for him but instead of being gold color they were a metallic blue color. Huh, grunted Naruto, unintentionally narrowing his eyes. It wasn't that he didn't want more quests it was that this was undoubtedly going to be some new game mechanic that was going to drive him ape. Naruto, you coming? Asked Shikamaru, coming back out of the shop. Then he saw Naruto's narrowed eyes and him looking down the street. What's up? Naruto quickly formed a team and invited Shikamaru. Do you see the blue question marks? Yeah, that's strange. Has it ever done that before? Nope, this is new. This is probably going to be troublesome, isn't it? Probably, answered Naruto. Well, let's finish up in Higurashi's then we can see what that's all about, said Shikamaru. Naruto nodded and finally followed Shikamaru into the shop. Yo, Naruto, you here for the weekly delivery. I'm sorry but I don't have one this week. Tenten got back from her mission early, explained Hidden. Then Naruto saw the old man had a blue, above his head. Well, have you got any work for me? Well, if you're hard up I could use some scrap metal. If you scour some of the training fields I'm sure you'll find plenty just laying around. Shinobi tend to just discard their broken weapons wherever. Daily quest alert, 0 fifths, salvage operation. Collect broken weapons from training fields 1 through 10. Collect 30 pieces of scrap metal. Completion award. Increase reputation with Higurashi weapons. 500 Ryo completion failure. Decrease reputation with Higurashi weapons. Naruto raised a surprised eyebrow when there was no experience associated with the quest, that and that 0 fifths made him curious. Naruto tapped the, accept, button. Daily quest accepted, 1 fifth Naruto groaned. Is this something you need every day? Well, I sure wouldn't say no to the free scrap metal, said Hidden with a chuckle. Okay, I'll take care of it, said Naruto. If Naruto understood the new mechanic correctly, the blue, was for daily quests of which he could only do 5 per day or accept 5 at a time and they only gave reputation points and money. Anyway, what can I do for you boys today? Chakra paper, said Shikamaru. Sorry boys, can only sell that to Chunin and above. Maybe you can convince your sensei to buy it for you, explained Hidden, looking on sympathetically. Figures it would be something like that, said Shikamaru. Are you sure I can't convince you just this once, pleaded Naruto. You know I would if I could Naruto but it's a big deal. If my store gets audited by the village and they find out I sold to Jen and they'd shut me down or fine me so heavily I'd have no choice but to go out of business anyway. It's okay, old man, I appreciate it anyway. Anything else I can get you boys, he asked. Yeah, 
said Cho Ji, speaking up. See, I got this hide and I was hoping to find out if I could get some better armor made or maybe traded for. Hidden picked up the hide. Now where did you boys run across a, Papa Boar? The beasties is dangerous. We know, all three deadpanned. Anyway, this is some really nice leather. I could probably make you some nice gloves and boots or maybe a jacket. You'd have to pay for the labor and any other pieces for it of course. How good are we talking here? Asked Naruto. Better than what you're wearing now, but not much better, answered Hidden. What could you do with two hides? Naruto asked quickly. Make more for him, why, you got another hide. Naruto pulled it out of his inventory and put it on the counter. How much is it worth? I usually pay about 6,000 ryo per hide, answered Hidden. Okay, so Choji, I'll sell you mine for 3,000 ryo and you can get more that way. What do you say? Deal, said Choji, grinning and pulling out the money. Naruto happily took it leaving Choji with the hide. Pleasure doing business with you. I hate you sometimes brat, said Hidden. Still, good of you to look out for your friends. So what do you think, jacket, boots and gloves? How much for the extras? The most expensive part is the leather which you provide. The rest of the bits and labor will run you about 10,000 ryo. Sound fair? Yeah, said Choji reluctantly, handing over the cash. There went my Yakiniku Q binge. Totally worth it though right? Asked Naruto. Yeah, I suppose, pouted Choji. Well, it will be ready in a week, come back for your stuff then. In the meantime, you'd better hit the road if you want to collect all that scrap before I close up shop. You got it, said Naruto, saluting him with a grin. Once back outside Shikamaru spoke first. So, daily quests now, huh? Yeah, I saw some kind of unlock message about that a while ago but had no idea what it was talking about. I think I can do up to four more today so we should probably figure out which quests to take and go from there. You should probably start with the farm stand and the general supply store and maybe the apothecary, suggested Shikamaru. Then Yakiniku Q, it would be nice if we could all go somewhere other than Ichiraku all the time. Blasphemer, hissed Naruto. Blasphemer, hissed Choji in response to Naruto. Troublesome, said Shikamaru. So it was the trio spent the rest of the night doing daily quests. Daily quest alert 1 5th. Scaredy cat. Scare away the alley cats around Yakiniku Q's garbage bins. Scare away 5 cats and Tora. Completion award. Increase reputation with Yakiniku Q 500 Ryo completion failure. Decrease reputation with Yakiniku Q. Daily quest accepted 2 5ths. Daily quest alert 2 5ths. Stop thief. Catch the fruit thieves and recover the stolen goods. Catch the thief and recover the stolen goods. Completion award. Increase reputation with farm stand. 500 Rio completion failure. Decrease reputation with farm stand. Daily quest accepted 3 fifths. Daily quest alert 3 fifths. Rats again. Eliminate the chakra rat nest in the basement storeroom. Kill 20 feet chakra rats and 1 foot king chakra rat. Completion award. Increase reputation with Konoha General Store. 500 Ryo completion failure. Decrease reputation with Konoha General Store. Daily quest accepted 4 fifths. Daily quest alert 4 fifths. Missing leaves. A box of medicinal leaves was delivered to the wrong shop. Find the missing crate and return it to Konoha Apothecary. Recover the missing crate of medicinal leaves. Completion award. Increase reputation with Konoha Apothecary. 500 Ryo completion failure, decrease reputation with Konoha Apothecary. Daily quest accepted 5 fifths. It was a really long night but the 50 reputation points per quest plus the money was kind of worth it. Chapter 13. Naruto awoke yawning, he may have been game fully rested but he felt a bit off. After finding out about the daily quests the day before and drudging through them it left him with plenty to think about. It was just more stuff the game was throwing at him. He couldn't help but wonder if things would always be this hectic. It was surprising then when he suddenly realized that he hadn't taken a day off, just off to relax and do nothing since the game thing started. That's it, this weekend I'm taking off, no training, no work, no dailies or quests, stated Naruto, suddenly feeling quite a bit lighter mentally. After the previous night, Shikamaru and Choji had already decided to take a day off of training with Naruto so it left him to his own devices. 
As such, it didn't take Naruto very long to go through his morning and get out to the market district to pick up the same five daily quests, figuring he'd get them done before meeting his team. Glad you could join us, Naruto, said Kakashi, watching Naruto sprint into the field. Sorry, I'm not late, am I? No, you're right on time, said Kakashi. Phew, that was close, said Naruto, wiping some imaginary sweat from his brow. Anyway, let's get to the mission office and see what's available to us, suggested Kakashi. Naruto was agitated by the mission Ignit. They had to catch Tora, the cat that Naruto had expended quite a bit of effort scaring off that morning. It made him really wish the game came with some kind of mini-map feature. Professional quest alert that was new. Yet more, gamer, bull to make Naruto's life a little more difficult. Fuenjutsu can do anything, create a new seal to imitate an active mapping utility. Earn level 20 to Fuenjutsu, skill and use, discovery. Completion award. 5000 EXP Naruto accepted the quest, still not completely sure what discovery was or what it did but it couldn't hurt him any to work on it, plus it was worth a good chunk of experience. The only downside is that Naruto would have to buy a lot more Fuenjutsu supplies from Higurashis in addition to putting in a lot of effort toward leveling his Fuenjutsu. Naruto sighed but followed his team on the hunt for Tora. Hours later and several unpleasant scratches that wouldn't fade, demonic infected scratches. How the that cat was a demon, Naruto did not know, understand, or want to understand for that matter. So, next stop is the library, said Kakashi, earning three relatively surprised looks from his students. What's at the library? asked Naruto. You'll just have to wait and see, said Kakashi, his face still buried in the porn book. You'd better not be taking us there to try and get us to start reading your books, snapped Sakura, her eyebrow twitching in clear annoyance. I would never, said Kakashi, mocking being appalled by the suggestion. You would, deadpanned Naruto and Sakura in one voice. H.N. Kakashi rolled his one eye and guided the group toward the library. Hot up K-san, I told you not to bring the trash in here, chided the librarian upon seeing the group. Naruto frowned thinking she was talking about him. But it's a book, protested Kakashi. Aren't all pieces of extraordinary literature welcome in such hallowed halls? Geisha Hotaru, is literature. Roroni Kenshin is literature. Ika Ika is not nor will ever be considered literature so long as I run this library. Now put it away before I burn it and you with it. Kakashi paled slightly and put his book away. Now, what can I do for you and your team, Hata K. san she asked, smiling pleasantly. I'm taking my team to the restricted section, said Kakashi. You're not teaching them jutsu from there are you? she asked, looking at him rather pointedly. Of course not, said Kakashi. I was told they needed to learn a taijutsu style, it's not really something I specialize in so here we are. Okay, but I'll be monitoring you and them very closely. Kakashi swallowed heavily. Yes, ma'am. Naruto looked at the byplay between the pair with a fair amount of amusement. Ever since the old man had changed the librarian, Naruto had been able to come in and check out a book here and there but he was always cautious about it, especially with the old bat behind the counter glaring at him. But now that she was glaring at Kakashi, Sakura, Sasuke, and himself all equally he was actually very rude. If any of you damage my books, I damage you, understood, demanded the old lady looking at the group. Yes, ma'am, they all chorused immediately. Silently the group moved through the library and up to the third floor. There the group was met by a heavily reinforced door guarded by four shinobi, all wearing anbu masks and all with, next to their levels. It was strange too that there were no names, just their animal names. Gecko LV. Wasp LV. Wolf LV. Ox LV. Now, my little ones, behave yourself in here or they will probably kill you and me and then everyone else in the library just to make sure, warned Kakashi. Naruto couldn't tell if he was joking when he said it but nodded his agreement anyway. Kakashi then knocked on the door. A moment later a slat opened in the door at eye level. P word. Gokaku, replied Kakashi. The slat slammed closed and from behind the door what sounded like ears shifting a moving began. It took a minute before the door finally swung open. Inside were row upon row of books and scrolls, all of them glowing with skill names just waiting to be learned. And once again inside the room were four more anbu, each one looking ready to attack at a moment's notice. 
afternoon, said Kakashi, inclining his head to the Anbu. Taicho, returned one of them in greeting. Bear LV. Naruto was curious but let it drop. The last thing he needed to was irritate the Anbu, especially with all of the effort he's been putting into improving his standing in Konoha. Come along, said Kakashi, walking through the rows without stopping. Naruto followed along but was so very tempted to start picking up scrolls and books and learning the skills in them. After a minute of navigate the rows Kakashi stopped at the end of one of the rows. Now, down this aisle you will find all of the various taijutsu styles Konoha has gathered over the years. You are allowed to find one beginner level taijutsu style you think would work well for you. We will then have a copy made and sent to me to give to you. I already have the Uchiha Interceptor style, said Sasuke. Why would I ever want to learn another style? And that is your prerogative, said Kakashi. But you'd be surprised, you might find something else worth learning. Sasuke shrugged and walked forward, glancing at the various scroll, occasionally picking one up and looking it over only to frown and put it back. How are the styles organized? Not sure, you could always go find that librarian again and ask her, Sakura-chan, offered Kakashi. That's okay, I'll figure it out, said Sakura, trying to frantically wave off the suggestion. I figured as much, said Kakashi. So what kind of style do you think I should look for, asked Sakura. It depends, if you want to specialize in genjutsu, I'd recommend you look for a taijutsu designed to create separation between you and your opponent. If you're looking to specialize in iryojutsu, look for something that specializes in dodging. Speaking of, have you thought at all about what you'd like to specialize in? Not really, Kakashi-sensei, answered Sakura, looking down. I don't really know what to do. Well, you'll have to figure it out sooner or later, said Kakashi. I guess for now look for both scrolls. I'll see if I can pull some strings for you to get both. What if she'd rather specialize in ninjutsu or taijutsu, asked Naruto, trying to give Sakura some more options. Sakura-chan, would either of those interest you, asked Kakashi. Sakura quickly shook her head in the negative. Well, there you go, said Kakashi. Sakura started down the aisle herself. Any advice for me, asked Naruto. No. Nope. You still need to decide your own path as well. Defensive, ninjutsu or even bukijutsu. Thanks for the help, said Naruto, frowning at his teacher. It was a dilemma that Naruto was still trying to figure out. What was his path going to be? Kakashi just smiled behind his mask and motioned Naruto into the aisle. Naruto started down the aisle, his observe going wild with yellow boxes giving skill names. Finally, one caught Naruto's eye. Beginner Uzukan Taijutsu, Naruto picked up the scroll and declined the learn option, actually opening the scroll to read the initial description. Uzukan is the traditional Taijutsu style of the Uzumaki clan. It relies on hit and run tactics, attacking from multiple directions and angles causing confusion and disorientation to opponents. Often used with weapons to great effect. Naruto liked this one, he liked this one a lot. Naruto rolled the scroll back up and tucked it under one arm. This would be his first choice of taijutsu styles. He continued his search since he had the time to look now, there may still have been another style he'd like to use. Beginner Nibakan Taijutsu Nibakan is a taijutsu that uses the principle of chakra sticking to attach yourself to your opponent's body or clothing and deliver devastating elbow and knee strikes. Users will often suffer severe damage in return. It would be a great defensive style, especially since Naruto could take a hit like no one else he'd ever met. Still, he liked Uzukan much more. Naruto tucked that scroll under his arm next to the other and continued looking. He checked a few others before he unexpectedly took a scroll to the head. Naruto glared at the source of the scroll, it was Sasuke. What the was that for? That's the style you should learn, he said simply, going back to the shelves. Naruto frowned but picked up the scroll in question. Beginner Kajkin Taijutsu Kajkin relies heavily on the use of Cage Bunshin. Designed to use coordinated strikes between the user and his clones to close on his opponent to inflict damage and evade damage at the same time. Highly effective but very difficult to learn given the chakra burdens of Cage Bunshin. Naruto hated to admit it but Sasuke was right, this was probably the best style for Naruto. With his ability to use crazy amounts of Cage Bunshin he couldn't do much better than this. 
Naruto looked again at the three scrolls in hand, he put the beginner Nibaken Taijutsu scroll back on the shelf and walked with the other two back to Kakashi to ask his opinion. What did you find there, Naruto? asked Kakashi, interested in the two scrolls in Naruto's hands. Kashkin and Uzukan, he answered. I can't decide which to learn though. Sasuke is right that Kashkin is perfect for me but Uzukan is my heritage. How can I pick one over the other? So learn both, suggested Kakashi. I don't know if my gamer ability would let me do that. Every time I've learned a new taijutsu level it replaces the previous one. I can see where that would be a problem, said Kakashi, rubbing his chin in thought. On the other hand, you never know until you try. I guess, thanks. No problem, now hand them over, said Kakashi, holding out a hand to Naruto. Naruto placed the two scrolls in his hand. When will the copies be delivered? They will be delivered to us at our training field by the end of practice today, that's Yuming Sasuke and Sakura ever pick a scroll or two. As if she heard his complaint, Sakura came up a moment later with a scroll in hand and handed it to Kakashi, smiling the whole way. Beginner Namakuji Haim Taijutsu, ho, ho, said Kakashi, apparently very approvingly. Tsunade Sama's own Taijutsu style. You know that many have tried to master this style but none have ever succeeded, not even her own apprentice. Sakura let doubt flash through her eyes for a moment but steeled her will after a second. I can do it, you even said my chakra control is perfect. I have to do it. So the path of the medic it is then, said Kakashi, clearly trying to confirm Sakura's choice. Well, I figure with the way Naruto is always getting beat up, I can get plenty of practice plus when Sasuke-kun gets his Sharingan he'll be using Genjutsu stronger than anything I can make so this would be better for the team, Sakura explained her decision. Very true, said Kakashi, nodding his acceptance. I don't get that beat up, pouted Naruto. Yes you do, said Sasuke, emerging from another aisle. He tossed a scroll to Kakashi. Sasuke, I said taijutsu, said Kakashi, not looking at the scroll after seeing Sasuke come out an aisle that had nothing to do with taijutsu. I know, but I already told you, I have the Uchiha interceptor style. That will actually help me. Kakashi sighed and looked at the scroll, so did Naruto and Sakura. Beginner Chikudo Kenjutsu, sword skills, asked Sakura, fangirl written all over her face. You're so cool, she all but screamed in fanaticism. I suppose this is close enough to taijutsu for me to allow it, said Kakashi, placing it with the other scrolls he'd collected. You'll have to buy your own sword. I can buy my own weapons, said Sasuke, firm in his decision. You can come with me to Higurashi's after team session. The old man has the best weapons, offered Naruto. I can take care of myself, said Sasuke, crossing his arms. Dude, it won't kill you to spend some time with me outside of team training and missions. You don't have to be a jerk. I thought I made it clear. I have no interest in becoming friends with any of you, said Sasuke, walking toward the exit. There are days when I really hate him, said Naruto, watching the jerk leave. I'll go with you, said Sakura, speaking up from behind him. I need more kanai and shuriken anyway. Cool, said Naruto. I don't really need anything but I could stand to pick up some more sealing supplies. Well, let's get moving, we've got trees waiting for you and they certainly won't climb themselves, said Kakashi, smiling. You three go ahead and I'll meet you there shortly. I need to go put in the order to get these copied. Kakashi joined the trio at the training field as promised about 20 minutes later. Naruto didn't mind as he had already gained a level in his tree climbing skill by the time Kakashi arrived. Okay, that's enough of that for now, gather round my cute little genin, Kakashi called, seeing Sakura had already exhausted herself. What's up? asked Naruto, not feeling draining in the slightest. Just a quick update. Once your scrolls arrive we'll break training for the day. I want you three to spend the rest of the day working on the scrolls, you don't have to do it here or even together but I do want you to start familiarizing yourself with them. The reason is that starting tomorrow we'll start sparing using your new style so you can begin to get acclimated. Sasuke, that means in addition to buying a Chikudo for yourself you'll need to buy a Chikudo Boken, explained Kakashi. After sparring for a bit we'll do some more chakra control work. At least until I'm satisfied with your progress. Once I feel you have significantly improved we'll start working on team tactics and simulations. Any questions? 
No, good, get back to work. Kakashi didn't even give them a chance to question it at the end. Naruto just shrugged in the end and went back to his thoroughly scarred tree and began running up and down it without pausing. It was almost two hours later the trio almost stopped as one when an unknown Kunoichi appeared in the field. The woman handed Kakashi a scroll then vanished within seconds. I'm guessing I won't get any more out of you guys today so you may as well come down here and get your scrolls, said Kakashi, seeing the eager looks on his students' faces. Naruto charged down his tree, racing to be the first to arrive. Kakashi though made a big long production out of it just for the sake of messing with his students. It was more than a little irritating to the genin. Kakashi finally unsealed the scrolls from the single scroll he was given. He then handed Sasuke and Sakura their scrolls before dragging it out even more. Sakura and Sasuke both went off to their own area of the training field and sat down to start reading their scrolls. Walk with me, Naruto, said Kakashi, twirling the scrolls between his fingers tauntingly. Naruto obeyed without question, his entire focus was on the scrolls Kakashi was teasing him with. Once they had put some distance between the other two genin Kakashi stopped. So, I've had some time to think about your situation. Naruto reluctantly tore his gaze off the scrolls and focused on Kakashi. Oh yeah, come up with anything. It was a thought, but what if you were to learn one of the scrolls like the Uzukan first? Then tried to learn Kajkan but more to augment the Uzukan. Make a cage no Uzukan taijutsu style. I don't know, that might work but. I just don't know. I've never considered it before. Do you really think that would work? Only one way to find out, said Kakashi, handing Naruto the Uzukan scroll. You've obtained the skill book beginner Uzukan taijutsu. Would you like to learn the skill? Naruto tapped the button to accept. You cannot learn the skill. Requires. Dex 50 Naruto couldn't help but groan. What is it? Say I need 50 dexterity points. How many do you have? 36 but have some points set aside for just in case things like this so. Naruto opened his status page and added the 14 points to his dex. Then he tried the book again. You've obtained the skill book beginner Uzukan Taijutsu. Would you like to learn the skill? You've upgraded your skill, Advanced Academy Taijutsu, 2, Beginner Uzukan Taijutsu. Beginner Uzukan Taijutsu, PIV, LV30 EXP, 0.00%. Pivly increases STR 10%, Pivly increases VIT 10%, Pivly increases DEX 20%, and now for the Kajkin, said Kakashi, offering him the scroll. You've obtained the skill book, Beginner Kajkin Taijutsu. Would you like to learn the skill? Naruto took a deep breath and tapped the accept button. Warning, this will replace, beginner Uzukan Taijutsu, do you wish to proceed? Crap, it says it will replace it. That's too bad, I guess you'll have to decide for yourself. Why don't you use the Uzukan for a few days and decide how you like it, suggested Kakashi. For now, just hold on to the other scroll. Naruto nodded and tapped the, decline, end button. You've obtained the skill book, beginner Kajkan Taijutsu. Would you like to augment the, beginner Uzukan Taijutsu, skill? Naruto's eyes widened then he shouted. Woohoo! Yada! What? Asked Kakashi, truly curious. After I hit no, another option popped up asking if I wanted to augment Uzukan. There you go then, said Kakashi, smiling through his mask at Naruto. Naruto tapped the accept button. You've upgraded your skill, beginner Uzukan Taijutsu, too. Beginner Cage no Uzukan Taijutsu. Pibli increases STR 10%, Pibli increases VIT 20%, Pibli increases DEX 20%. I take it that worked well then? Asked Kakashi. Yeah it did, this is freaking bad. I just need the intermediate scrolls for both styles to upgrade to the next grade, said Naruto, the energy and excitement were practically flowing off of him. I'm glad that worked so well, said Kakashi. Anyway. We'll see what you've got tomorrow when we start sparring. Naruto grinned. For now, go collect your teammates and head for Higurashi's, ordered Kakashi, only to vanish a moment later. Naruto ran back to the field to see only Sakura remained. Where did Sasuke go? He left, said he had stuff to do, answered Sakura with a shrug. You waited for me. We did say we were going to Higurashi's right. Yeah, said Naruto, grinning and scratching the back of his head in slight emberment. We did, didn't we? He honestly hadn't expect Sakura to wait for him. 
Afterwards, do you want to go to that training field again? Asked Sakura. I could use the practice. Sure, said Naruto. We just have to be quick about it. I don't particularly want to be hunting rats in the dark. Sakura shivered slightly. Yeah, let's get a move on. Naruto and Sakura hurried through shopping at Higurashi's and got to the training field to clear it out. It went much faster this time than the first time they had come. Still, it got Sakura another much needed level. You have slept in your bed. HP and CP are fully restored. Naruto opened his eyes and looked at the message then closed it and rolled over to try to sleep more, this time just for the sake of. He quickly discovered it wasn't going to happen. Naruto got out of bed after lounging for a while before accepting it was boring and not worth it. Naruto decided he was hungry and made himself a few cup ramen. So there he was, sitting on his beat up couch, eating with absolutely no idea what he was going to do on his self-appointed day off. Usually by now he would have cleared a training field or done his daily quests or started training his skills. With his ramen devoured, Naruto grabbed one of his game console controllers and FPED the machine on. But after about 5 minutes of play he felt somewhat disgusted with himself. It wasn't fun anymore. I was dull and slow paced and just. Not fun anymore. Naruto turned the game off and gave a look out his window, it was sunny out, a really nice day to go out. Naruto stood and stretched before walking toward his bathroom. 10 minutes later he left with a giant frown on his face. His ed toilet finally broke completely. The ed seat finally busted off entirely and now the ed thing wouldn't flush and considering what he left in there it was not a good thing. Naruto dressed and left his apartment walking down the stairs to his landlord's apartment where he knocked on the door. I'm coming, called a voice from the other side of the door. When it opened the landlord glared at him. Oh, it's you, what do you want? My toilet is broken, replied Naruto, not sure what the man would do. And that's my problem why. You're the landlord, said Naruto as if it was obvious. So, he replied shortly. So it's your responsibility to fix it and everything else in my apartment that's broken, Naruto nearly shouted at the man. Ha, huh, you seem to think you live in some major luxury apartment complex where they have maintenance staff. In case you haven't noticed, this is what's known as a slum. That means crap gets run down and broken and never fixed unless the people that live here are stupid enough to try and fix it themselves. In a few years, this place will become such a hole that some rich shinobi or merchant will buy the building from me cheap, evict all the residents, take the building down and build some new luxury place until it runs down and becomes a slum and the process repeats over and over again. So what the am I supposed to do about the ink toilet? Fix it yourself, said man, slamming the door shut in Naruto's face. Life quest alert flushed down the drain, fix your toilet. Learn, home repair and maintenance, skill and use it to fix your toilet. Completion award, 1000 EXP 1 month of free rent. Increase reputation with landlord. Completion failure, 100 EXP 1 month of double rent. Unlivable apartment eviction decrease reputation with landlord. Naruto groaned in irritation. This was supposed to be a day off it. But this was something that had to be done and sooner rather than later. It also meant he'd have to go to Konoha General Store, a place he was still hated which meant the price for part would be jacked up on him. Naruto trudged through town to the general store, the blue, hovering over the clerk's head just begging to be accepted. Ah good, you're here again to kill them rats, said the clerk. Ah, I actually needed to buy some stuff, said Naruto. If you ain't here for the rats then get out, said the man, pointing toward the front door. If I kill the rats, will you let me buy some stuff when I'm done? Asked Naruto. The clerk sneered. I'll tell you what, you kill the rats, and I'll let you buy some stuff but just this once. And don't you dare try to abuse my generosity you little punk. Daily quest alert, zero fifths, rats again. Eliminate the chakra rat nest in the basement storeroom. Kill 40 feet chakra rats, and 2 feet king chakra rat. Completion award. Increase reputation with Konoha General Store. 12 hour shopping P for Konoha General Store completion failure. Decrease reputation with Konoha General Store. So no money but the shopping P was what he really needed so it was worth it just this once even if it was double the number of rats from usual. Daily quest accepted, one fifth Naruto went into the basement and defeated the little bad guys, it took a few hours because it was a whole lot of rats to kill and very little experience for his troubles. 
Thankfully he didn't get bit this time which was actually kind of awesome. Naruto turned in the quest and got his P which gave him a status buff, 12 hour shopping P only valid in Konoha general store. You got any books on home repair? Asked Naruto. The clerk eyed him for minute. Aisle 9, he answered, pointing down the line from where they were. It didn't take long for Naruto locate the aisle in question. There were actually quite a few books on, home repair and maintenance. Naruto grabbed the book Beginner Home Repair and Maintenance, and put it in his basket. Then he grabbed the toilet repair, door repair, sink repair, and cabinet repair. He really wanted to get the books for stove repair, and refrigerator repair, but they both required intermediate skill level. There were a lot more that interested him but for now this would be enough to do some much needed repairs around his home. Naruto went and bought the books, they were only 500 ryo each and took them home. Naruto burned the beginner book first which gave him the, life skill. Home repair and maintenance, active, LV1 EXP, 0.00 CP, 5. Every man should know how to fix the things around home that break. It's amazing how much can be done with just a hammer and nails. Additional 10% to home repair and maintenance speed when active. He then burned the other four books which didn't get him any recipes like he expected but instead increased his level by one per book. Knowledge in hand, Naruto went into the bathroom to fix the toilet only to get a warning message. Cannot use home repair and maintenance. Requires. Basic toolkit Naruto wanted very badly to bang his head against the wall. He should have known better. Of course he'd need tools, tools he didn't own and would now have to go buy. Thankfully, he still had the shopping P status buff. Naruto re-entered the store and despite the glare from the clerk, he allowed Naruto to shop. I need a basic tool kit, he said to the clerk. Aisle 1, the man growled. Naruto walked down the aisle looking at the various tool kits available. He had no idea what was basic and what wasn't. Then he saw it. Home repair and maintenance basic tool kit all the necessities to complete any home repair that does not require a specialized tool. Naruto sighed in relief when the observed told him as much about the tool kit, it really was perfect. As Naruto walked back to the front to pay for his stuff another thought struck him. He'd need parts to fix the broken stuff at home. So Naruto started to explore, aisle by aisle looking for the stuff he'd need. He found the toilet supplies first and felt even more lost than before. There were toilet seats galore, oval and round, padded and unpadded, wood, plastic, or porcelain, and then there were also some heated seats. Who needed a heated toilet seat? Naruto grabbed a round wooden seat that was about the right size for his toilet. Then he had to get the parts for the inside of the toilet to make it flush. He decided for that he would get all new guts just to be on the safe side. Then he found he could actually replace the whole toilet but it was just a bit too expensive so the parts would be enough. Next Naruto found the bathroom sink fixtures just down the aisle from the toilet stuff. He grabbed a basic faucet with white handles to replace the one in the bathroom that looked almost exactly the same. After that, Naruto has to search for door handles and locks, he figured if he was going to mess with one door, he may as well fix all of his doors. And last he got the necessary cabinet hardware to fix the hinges and handles, he couldn't really afford to do more than that. When Naruto put it on the counter the clerk naturally sneered at him, not that he expected different so long as he was considered hated by the shop still. Naruto watched as the price kept going up and his wallet felt thinner and thinner. This was not favorable for him. 27,050 Rio later, Naruto felt completely beaten for the day. He'd end up having to do the daily quests anyway just to keep himself out of the poor house. Naruto finally got home a few hours later, he did his daily quests despite not really wanting to. After that he set about repairing his home. It was totally worth it in the end. Chapter 14. Naruto was once again awake and unable to sleep any longer, this time on Sunday and as a result was very quickly bored out of his skull. It was nice to relax but he'd gotten so used to doing something to occupy his hours that doing nothing was more exhausting. It was not good. It, grumbled Naruto. He was out the door a few minutes later. He started in the market district going through the monotonous daily quests, making a little money and even less experience. Happily, Naruto ran into Choji and Shikamaru coming out of Yakiniku Q. Hey guys, greeted Naruto, just finishing up his last daily quest. Couldn't resist, huh? asked Shikamaru. 
Nope, I'm just not made for sitting still. Especially when this game is my life. Choji chuckled. Could be worse. Anyway, want to hit up a few training fields, grind some experience. Naruto looked at Choji funny. Have you been playing video games? Choji grinned. Yeah, a little. I got one of those old systems from when we first started at the academy. It's been fun. Yeah, I tried to sit back and play some yesterday. Didn't go so well. I almost wanted to pull my hair out. So you interested? Asked Shikamaru. Naruto grinned and wordlessly formed a team and invited them to join it. So starting at 11? Asked Choji. Sure, said Naruto. It should be reset by now. I took Sakura-chan again a few days ago so we should be good. Awesome, said Choji. Let's roll. You can roll, personally I'm going to run, joked Naruto, earning a snort of laughter from Shikamaru. Let's just go already, said Shikamaru, leaping up to the nearest rooftop. The small team arrived in the field and were quickly attacked by rats as expected. What was not expected was so many rats to be attacking at once. What is going on, there are twice as many rats as usual, asked Naruto, slicing another rat in half. No idea, but this is going to become troublesome if they keep coming at this pace, said Shikamaru, his shadow grabbing three rats and strangling them all quickly before tossing them aside. Choji was mega stomping rats left and right and quickly draining chakra points in the process. We're going to get overwhelmed. Did you put this on hard mode or something? No, I wouldn't even know how to do that let alone know if it's even possible complained Naruto, raining down kunai and shuriken on another wave of rats that was just emerging, wiping out nearly half of them instantly and damaging the rest. Well something is different, said Shikamaru. The sound of three girls shrieking a moment later caught all of the boys' attention. That's why, said Naruto. We need to regroup with the girls and work together. The difficulty increased because there are more of us in the zone. Troublesome, Choji, use Nikudin Sensha to open a path for us. Naruto, lay down heavy kanai and shuriken on either side of him to buy us some more time, ordered Shikamaru. Choji immediately turned into a ball of spinning death, plowing through dozens of rats charging toward the three girls that came into the field. Choji came out of his spin just before the group of girls. Ino, Hinata, Sakura, down now! shouted Naruto, leaping as high as he could then spraying the ground all around them with hundreds of kanai and shuriken buying all of them some time to regroup. Naruto, what the is with the rats? There are so many this time. It's because there are so many of us here. Speaking of, why are the three of you here? Shikamaru answered and queried. I came to train, said Sakura, giving Ino the stink eye. I thought, forehead here was up to no good so I followed her, stated Ino. Um, stuttered Hanada, panicking slightly. Troublesome, said Shikamaru. Fine, you're here now so focus, follow my orders exactly and do what you're told when you're told or we're all going to end up really hurt here. Why should I, Ino, now is not the time, snapped Shikamaru, stabbing a king chakra rat then barbecuing it with a blast of fire. These things will kill us. Ino paled. It was unusual for Shikamaru to yell at anyone, let alone yell at her. It made her suddenly realize the danger of the situation they were in. How many more waves, Naruto, asked Choji, he was starting to run low on chakra. Six or seven, I lost count when we moved to the girls, he said, spawning clones to east. Hinata, get up to the front line with Naruto and Choji. Ino, when Hinata knocks a rat down, finish it. Sakura, you've been here before so I expect you know what to do here, I want you to provide range support and if you know any first aid, help out where you can, ordered Shikamaru. Hanada ran up to stand between Naruto and Choji and began rapidly striking the rats, knocking them down stunned. Ino hesitated defeat them at first until one popped up and bit her. After that she was merciless, stabbing rats left and right. Okay, the abomination should be here soon, said Shikamaru as the flow of rats slowed down significantly. Chakra Rat Abomination LB 20 HP, 2500-2500 CP. 1000 1000 the rare abomination, a chakra mutated creature so far gone it has taken to eating its own kind. They are often drawn out when their food source is threatened. This is bad, said Naruto. It's quite a bit stronger than the ones we usually face. This is going to get bloody. Choji, I'll act as the shield, I can take more hits and damage than you or anyone else here. 
Just make sure you kill this ugly fast. You got it, Naruto, said Choji, jumping back to Shikamaru's side. Okay, we need to give Naruto some time to piss it off. Use this time to bandage any wounds or take any antidotes you might have on you, ordered Shikamaru, pulling out a small vial from his hip pouch and quickly gulping it down, while Choji did the same. I have extras, said Sakura, offering one to both Ino and Hinata. I didn't get bitten, stuttered Hinata. But thank you, Sakura-san. Thanks, forehead, said Ino, taking one and gulping it down. Sakura nodded and gulped one down herself. Sakura, can you bandage my arm? Asked Choji, showing her a gash that was bleeding freely. Sakura pulled a roll of bandages from her pouch and wrapped Choji's arm up as quickly as she could before tying it off. You're good to go. Thanks, said Choji. Meanwhile, Naruto was doing everything in his power to piss up the abomination. You your mother with that mouth. Or did you eat her too? Okay, Choji, shoulder ram it, ordered Shikamaru. Naruto, give us any explosive tags you've got while it's dazed. Naruto leapt back to the group handed them a stack of tags then jumped right back to Abomination, jabbing a kanai into one of its eyes causing it to howl in pain. Hanada, Ino, while Naruto keeps it distracted I need you to help out with placing these tags on it. Hanada, can you disable its legs? called Naruto, dodging another wild swing from the beast and jabbing another kanai into its shoulder only to get smacked to the ground by its tail. Naruto winced in pain but rolled back away from the rat and back up to his feet. He threw a handful of shuriken at it buying him only a few seconds before it was on him again. Naruto blocked a hammering fist above his head from the rat, causing his knees to buckle slightly. This rat wasn't playing nice today. Hanada ran in, chakra blazing off her hands as she struck hard at the rat's legs and knees. She danced around it and over its tail, rapidly striking at the beast as she moved. She was fearless in that moment and it was awesome. Alright, Hanada, shouted Naruto, grinning at the time and space it bought him. With the rat's movement stopped they were able to separate from it and catch their breath a bit. It didn't last long as the rat once again charged after Naruto. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu shouted Naruto, spawning as many clones as he could with the limited chakra he had left at that point. The clones tackled the rat back. Now, shouted Shikamaru, signaling everyone to start tagging the rat with explosive notes while Naruto held the abomination to the ground. Shikamaru heard the popping first signaling some of the clones were dispersing. Five seconds. It was the longest five seconds Shikamaru ever experienced. Get clear now. Katsu, shouted Naruto, channeling chakra through his clones into the explosive tags. The ground shook with the detonation. He's still not down, said Naruto, panting. Choji, toss Naruto up over it. I'll try to hold it, ordered Shikamaru, focusing as hard as he could to hold its shadow. Even if it was weakened it was still strong as. Choji, sprinted to Naruto. As soon as he got to him he enlarged his hands. Naruto stepped up onto the hands and was soon rocketed skyward. Naruto dropped fast, angling himself head first at the beast that Shikamaru was straining to hold. He pulled a kanai into each hand and put them ahead of himself so they would impact the beast first. Naruto pushed the little chakra he had left into the blades, trying to make them stronger. Naruto hit the beast and his kanai cut into the abomination like a wow knife through butter. Naruto's arms buried up to his elbows in the beast's chest. Naruto pushed himself out and stumbled away. The rat heaved one more labored breathe before going completely still, its hit points completely drained. Naruto sat back on his heavily breathing. That, he stopped, gasping for breath for a moment. That was awesome. Right, you're almost dead and you think that was awesome, said Shikamaru, sitting down next to Naruto, also exhausted. A special skill has been created through a special act. Flowing chakra into your weapon to make them stronger, Chakra Nagashi, LV1 has been created. What the was that thing, demanded Ino. Why the would you fight it? Why the did I stay and fight it? That, Buddha, was a chakra rat abomination and a really nasty one, answered Sakura. We fought it to get stronger. You stayed to fight because your team needed you too. Ino frowned at Sakura momentarily. You've fought it before. Never one that strong, replied Sakura. Shikamaru, you said it was stronger because there were more us. How is that possible? It can naturally sense chakra, he answered. The abominations eat the little ones to get stronger, the little ones try to eat us because we have chakra. 
We killed so many of the little ones the big guy sensed it. But again, why so big this time? We killed more of the little ones than we ever have before, that's why. Sakura frowned but decided to accept it for now. Naruto sat quiet noticing that everyone there but him gained a level for all of that effort, Hinata gained two levels. While he sat at 95.66% of his level. A measly 3.44% until level 19. It just wasn't fair. Granted he was quite a bit higher level wise than his companions but still it wasn't fair after all of that. Naruto finally stood back up to inspect what the fat hole dropped. 6000 Ryo Iryo. Keidokuzai no Jutsu, skill scroll Naruto picked up the scroll and tossed it to Sakura. What's this? She asked confused. It must have eaten that scroll at some point. Isn't that an antidote Jutsu? Sakura's eyes widened then looked again quickly at the scroll. Oh my Kami, it is. Anyone object to Sakura getting that after she was nice enough to share her antidotes with us? Asked Shikamaru. Why should forehead get it? Demanded Ino. Oh chill Buddha, you can borrow once I've learned it, said Sakura, smiling happily. I'm fine with it, stuttered Hinata. But I would also like to see it when you're done. Of course, Hinata, said Sakura, still smiling happily. Thank you, she replied softly, almost inaudibly. So, that leaves the rest of us with a thousand ryo apiece, said Naruto, dolling out a stack of cash. That thing had money, questioned Ino loudly. Naruto, Shikamaru, Choji, and Sakura all shrug. Must have eaten someone with it at some point, said Naruto. Come to mama, said Ino, grabbing for the money. Naruto held her share out to her and she greedily took it. Guess I'm getting those new shoes sooner than planned, she said to herself, happily counting the bills. Or you could spend the money on some better armor, groused Shikamaru, earning him a glare for his trouble. Okay, so who's up for a little hunting now? Asked Naruto, bouncing back to his feet, his HP and CP fully restored. How can you be ready for more after that? Asked Sakura in disbelief. That wasn't so bad, said Naruto. If you want to see bad, you should check out training field 13 sometime. That is bad. What's on field 13? Asked Ino. Spiders, chakra spiders to be exact and the queen spider is a real too, said Naruto, shuddering for a moment. So where do you hunt? What do you hunt for that matter? Asked Sakura. Training field 12, we can get ham and mushrooms, answered Choji, drooling slightly. Ham. He drawled out in a long, desirous voice. Ino twitched. Ham, as in pigs, she asked. Boars actually, said Naruto, standing a fair distance away from the platinum blonde. I see, said Ino. Sakura though giggled a little. Then she laughed outright. Ino, stood stiffly then walked away from the field trying to maintain even a little dignity and failing miserably when she tripped over divot in the ground. So, hunting? Asked Naruto, grinning happily. I'm done, said Shikamaru. That was almost too much for today. I think I'm going to go cloud watching for the rest of today. Okay, Shika, see you, said Naruto cheerfully. I'm out too, said Choji. I would but I really want to study this scroll, said Sakura, hugging her new technique scroll. How about you, Hinata? Asked Naruto, smiling in as friendly a manner as he could. Hinata though turned bright red and fainted. Not again, groaned Naruto. I'll get her home, said Sakura, trying to withhold a giggle of amusement. You go have fun hunting. Yeah, sure, I'll go keep myself busy elsewhere, said Naruto. He didn't really want to try hunting by himself, it just wasn't as fun and he didn't want to repeat any of the other fields so off to Ikirakus it was. You have slept in your bed. HP and CP are fully restored. Naruto awoke feeling refreshed the next morning. While his peaceful relaxing weekend plan may have gone to crap, he was only too happy for all that he accomplished. Bouncing out of bed, he started off his morning as usual, hygiene and breakfast followed by his daily quests, something he rushed through to get done to make it to his team meeting on time. The team met at their usual spot on one of the small bridges not too far from the Hokage's tower. Sasuke was sharpening the blade of his sword. Sakura was buried in a medical text with the scroll she got the previous day sitting next to her, partially unraveled. Yo, greeted Naruto, mimicking Kakashi's normal greeting. HN, grunted Sasuke, barely glancing at him. Morning, Naruto, greeted Sakura, also barely looking at him. She was really into her text. 
Naruto sat down with his teammates to wait on their sensei. The man arrived within a few minutes so it wasn't a very long wait. Yo, greeted Kakashi, causing Naruto to giggle a little while the other two just rolled their eyes. Anyway, let's go get a mission. Naruto followed along, a bored look on his face. These D-ranked mission were pure monotony. Today they ended up chopping firewood for a farmer on the outskirts of town. The only major upside was Naruto gaining a level at the end of the mission. Congratulations. Your level has increased by one. Naruto ended up smiling the rest of the day after that, regardless of Sasuke dominating him in their taijutsu spar yet again. The guy was fast as and seemed to be able to counter anything Naruto threw at him. However, when Naruto did manage to hit him it was totally worth the pain he suffered to make it happen. After they all sparred for a while it was back to tree climbing. A standard routine, even after just two weeks as a team. It was long and exhausting and very uninteresting. Still, it gave Naruto the time he needed to improve all his skills. Naruto returned to the academy training field after the day's team activities ended. He had bonus points to earn. It didn't actually take very long to achieve the points either, he'd really got the hang of it by now. But that left him looking at his stats again. He had way more dexterity than strength and with the way Sasuke was able to speed around him he needed to increase his speed and to do that he needed to balance his strength some with his dexterity. With that in mind, Naruto dumped all 7 points he had left over into his strength. Having plenty of daylight left to burn, Naruto stopped in at Higurashi's. Oh, Naruto, greeted Hidden, seeing Naruto enter his shop. What's up, old man, returned Naruto, smiling at the old man. Same old, what can I do for you today? Just browsing, got done early today so. Here I am, answered Naruto, shrugging. You ever make any storage scrolls with those supplies you bought? Not yet, why? Well, if you ever have any to spare, I'll buy them from you if they are good enough. My last supplier of storage scrolls died in a Fuenjutsu accident and none of my other suppliers can keep up with the demand. Naruto's eyes widened slightly. He was suddenly very thankful for his gamer skill making accidents like that nearly impossible. So, how much are we talking about here? 500 Ryo per grade 1 scroll, more for the higher grade stuff. Done, said Naruto. I'll make some up for you, no problem. Great, replied Hidden. Now, anything else I can get you. More supplies then. I'll take 100 blank scrolls and 50 bottles of ink, said Naruto. That's a lot of scrolls, said Hidden. So, I'll use them all, said Naruto, still grinning. I'll be right back then, said Hidden. The man moved into the back of his shop. Naruto could hear the sound of boxes being moved and shifted from the back room. He took a little time to explore some of the weapons on display. They were all very nice but not really his style. He also noted none of them were made with chakra conductive metal according to his observed skill. Here you go brat, said Hidden, setting two large boxes on the counter. Hey, I noticed you don't have any charka conductive weapons out here, do you have them somewhere else? Yep, answered Hidden, suddenly cold to Naruto. Can I see them? No. Why not? I like you kid, but I don't like you that much. Those weapons are extremely expensive and even more valuable, maybe if you prove yourself a bit more, someday I might consider letting you take a look at the reserve stock. Understood. Naruto nodded. That had to mean he needed to be at a higher reputation with the shop than he currently was. Naruto then stacked his two boxes and carried them home. Once home he sat down and started making, storage scroll grade 1, in bulk. He had 140 blank scrolls to place Fuin on and he'd be ed if he didn't get it done. What Naruto didn't expect was for it to take 15 minutes to make just one scroll. After 3 hours he had made only 12 scrolls and it was already past midnight. Okay, so this might take a few days, groused Naruto. Stepping away from the table he was using to write the Fuinjutsu on. He yawned and stretched before turning and heading to bed. You have slept in your bed. HP and CP are fully restored. Another week in the books and a steadily growing stack of grade 1 storage scrolls covered Naruto's kitchen table. The good news was that he was almost done, 140 scrolls. The bad news, he'd been so focused on it that he'd foregone most of his other training. Still, it was worth a lot of money. If Naruto pushed he would finish them all today, today being Sunday. 
So after a shower and a quick breakfast, Naruto sat at his table and pulled up one of his last 22 scrolls. It would take exactly 8 hours to make them all. Even better it would be close to enough to gain level 20 in Fuenjutsu. Okay, let's do this, said Naruto, starting his first scroll of the day. Hours later Naruto finished scroll number 17 when he received a system announcement. Through hard work and diligence your Fuenjutsu professional skills level has increased by 1. Learned recipe, discovery. Discovery can be used once every 3 days to create a new Fuenjutsu recipe within your ability level. Naruto grinned. He couldn't help it. This was awesome. He opened his skills menu to review it when he saw something that made him frown. He'd level capped Fuenjutsu. Then it occurred to him that it must have been the beginner level he'd capped and now he needs the intermediate. Fuenjutsu, active, LV max CP. 20, a professional skill allowing you to create seals that can be used to improve your gear, make explosives or just seal stuff away for later. Naruto's frown only lasted a moment before deciding to finish the last few scrolls and sell them before paying a visit to the really old man, some people would call Hokage. 70,000 Ryo, here I come baby, cheered Naruto, stacking all the now completed scrolls into two large boxes. Chapter 15. In the three months that had ped since graduating from the academy, Naruto had done little else but train his off and do the missions ignit. And somewhere in all of that he also improved his life skills, fuenjutsu, and reputation building daily quests. It left him quite a bit better off for money and best of all. Dot dot. Name. Uzumaki Naruto CL. The gamer title. Genin, plus 10 increase to experience gain, level. LV21 next level. 76.55% affiliation. Konoha HP. 3393390 CP. 2841 2841st STR. 5330.30 equals 83.30 BIT. 4584.00 equals 129.00. Dex. 5335.60 equals 88.60 int. 57, 17.13 equals 84.13 wis. 43, 16.56 equals 59.56 luck. Def. 137, 34.25 equals 171.25 SPD. 10, 62.65 equals 72.65 status. Uzumaki, plus 10 bit. Plus 10 int. Plus 50% experience to Fuenjutsu, skill, Kayubi Jinchuriki, plus 100, HP and plus 100, CP per level, prankster, minus 5% reputation gains, plus 5% experience to trap, skill, plus 5% experience to stealth, skill. Uzumaki Naruto is the dead last of this year's graduating CL, rating so low because of his inability to create a basic bunshin. Naruto proved his worth after the test when he stopped a traitor and learned to a ranked kenjutsu. And finally he has gotten some answers to his past but still mystery remains. Who is his father? How did the Kyubi escape? Point. Zero Ryo. 344,000 still. Sasuke had him by a level still but they were so closely matched now it was amazing. Even if Sasuke was still faster and more skilled in taijutsu. Their taijutsu only spars were becoming closer and closer things to watch. Sadly, Sasuke had also picked up a lot more ninjutsu along the way, not from Kakashi. Of course not from Kakashi, that guy was a prick about teaching them new stuff. In the three months they had been a team he had worked on their taijutsu, taught them tree climbing, and team tactics. That's it. No other chakra control exercises, no elemental affinity training, no ninjutsu. Add to that the daily bull D rank mission and you had three very unhappy genin. Well, mostly Naruto and Sasuke were unhappy. Sakura was just fine with it because it gave her the chance to learn some more Iryojutsu. Apparently the hospital just about gave scrolls away to any shinobi that asked for them, up to a certain level anyway. Speaking of levels, she had gained four levels in the last two months and was now proudly sitting at level 18. So, once again Naruto and his teammates were standing in the Hokage's office, collecting a mission when something finally snapped in Naruto. That's it, no more, he all but shouted. What seems to be the problem, Naruto-kun, asked the old man, happily sitting in his throne-like chair. I can't take any more of these, pleaded Naruto. 
Please, just put me out of my misery and give us AC rank, just one. Well, I'm surprised it took you so long to demand such a mission, said the old man, barely stifling a chuckle. I held out as long as I could but I can't do it anymore, said Naruto. So what do you say? And do you really think your team is ready for this? Asked Sarutobi. Yeah, said Naruto. Kakashi. Ma, I guess they could do with a bit of a challenge, said Kakashi. Well then, I suppose we can give you AC rank, said Sarutobi, picking one off the large stack of scrolls next to him. One C rank mission for Team 7 it is then. So what is it? Demanded Naruto. Clearing out a bandit army, saving a princess, or maybe overthrowing a corrupt businessman who is strangling the economy of a poor nation for his own gain. You will be protecting a certain individual, said the old man, laughing lightly at Naruto's conjecture. So who is it? In walked an old man, a red glow to his face, he stumbled slightly and hiccuped once, a jug of alcohol shook and sloshed from a string wrapped around his wrist. Meet Tazuna, he's a bridge builder, said Sarutobi, introducing the man. You'll protect him on his trip back to Wave and protect him until he completes construction on his bridge. Protect him from what? Asked Sakura. Maybe himself? Asked Naruto, earning a small giggle from Sakura and smirk from Sasuke. Are you sure these brats can protect me? Asked Tazuna. They are capable but even if things get out of hand I'll be there to step in, word Kakashi. Well, I expect you to do a super job, he said, taking a long pull from his sake jug. We leave first thing in the morning. Get some rest and be ready to go at first light, said Kakashi. We'll meet at the south gate. He then vanished a moment later. The three kids frowned. I'm going to drink, you kids better be super ready, slurred Tazuna, turning and stumbling away. Quest alert. C rank mission, as if. Protect Tazuna through the process of completing his bridge. Objectives. Escort Tazuna safely to Nami no Kuni. Escort Tazuna safely through Nami no Kuni to his home. Bonus objectives. Completion award. 5000 EXP per objective. 10,000 EXP per bonus objective. 50,000 EXP upon completion of all objectives. 100,000 Ryo upon completion of all objectives. Increase reputation with Konoha. Increase reputation with Nami completion failure. Possible death and dismemberment. Major loss of reputation. Oh, said Naruto. It was another quest the game wouldn't let him decline in based on the objectives and the amount of experience and money this was going to be another cluster. Go on, you three, ordered the Hokage, rotating his chair away from them to look out his window. Naruto was not happy about this. This was not good at all. These kinds of quests usually ended up with him getting into really deep. It was worse in fact when Naruto tried to re-enter the office only for some invisible force preventing him from entering. You guys want to hit up a training field? Asked Naruto, it was a desperate attempt. While he'd never had the opportunity to invite his whole team to a training field before, never really wanted to for that matter, but given they had plenty of extra time and this mission was bound to go to if that quest was any indicator. I'm game, said Sakura, before turning and looking hopefully at Sasuke. Sasuke stared the two down, clearly debating with himself whether or not he should go along. Finally he growled. What's so special about going to a training field? Chakra mutations, answered Naruto. They are tough and mean and dangerous and really fun to kill, you can even work out your anger and aggression. Fine, but this better not be a waste of my time. Naruto grinned. Sakura cheered. Where are we going? Asked Sasuke, crossing his arms defensively. He tried to make it clear he was just trying to pacify his teammates but Naruto could see that the young prodigy's interest was piqued. I'm thinking field 18, said Naruto. It was likely that the recommended level for field 18 was between 15 and 17. They easily fit that with their current levels plus it would give them all one more chance to level up before their mission, something that may mean the difference between life and death. What's on field 18? Asked Sakura. Don't know, never been there, said Naruto. But that's the point. Tomorrow we're going into the unknown on our first C rank, anything can happen. I figure going to a field we've never been to before would be good for us. Sakura looked doubtful for a moment before finally nodding her agreement. Okay, let's try it but if it gets bad, we're leaving. Of course, said Naruto, trying to roar the girl. Just don't get in my way, said Sasuke, abruptly turning and walking away from his teammates leaving them to catch up to him. 
So where is Field 18? asked Sakura. Near the power station, answered Naruto. The boy had chosen to smartly buy a map of the village and more specifically the training grounds, only available to Shinobi of course. The mapping seal he made wasn't nearly as detailed and mostly just mapped where he'd gone. That was one more thing Naruto had managed during the last two months. He'd improved his Fuenjutsu quite a bit, even discovering the mapping seal he applied to the goggles he once again wore only this time he actually used them. Well, used them sometimes. Mostly they just hung around his neck but whenever he needed to use them to they were easy to slide up and on. The map was very basic, it only gave him a comp bearing and map to an area within maybe 100 meters. They didn't tell him where stuff was, they didn't tell him where people were, friendly or enemy. They didn't even show quest objectives. It was kind of lame, truth be told but still, they had a few useful moments. So Naruto guided his team to the training field, his mind trying not to think on the quest alert that had come not too long ago. Training Field 18 This thick and foggy forested area is located near the Konoha power station. It is also home to several wild wolf packs that deter many enemies from trying to attack said power station. Recommended Level, 17. Wolves, said Naruto, landing on a tree branch at near the entrance to the field. How can you tell? asked Sasuke. Naruto panicked for about a second before he heard a howl and smirked. HN. Okay, so here's the plan, started Naruto, hoping Sasuke would follow along. I'll be keeping most of the wolves focused on me, they are likely to attack in groups and probably won't die very easily. Sasuke, I need you to kill the wolves as quickly as you can without drawing their attention from me. Sakura, can you help from range and patch us up as necessary between waves? I've got it, said Sakura. Sasuke. Naruto called to him, hoping for an affirmative response. Fine, he grunted. Let's just get this over with. Naruto pulled a pair of kanai and dropped to the forest floor. Okay little puppies, it is dinner time, come and get a little Naruto. He's delicious. There were several howls following Naruto's taunt causing a feral grin to cross his visage. The first wolf that attacked was a scout. Pax Scout LVL 15 HP. 1250-1250 CP, 250-250 it's this young wolf is not yet mature enough to hunt with the pack and has been relegated to scouting for the hunting party. Don't let its youth fool you, this wolf has something to prove and a bite to back it up. Ah, aren't you just the cutest little wolf scout? Naruto babied the wolf, causing its eyes to turn red with anger. It charged forward, more than a little angry. Naruto slid past the wolf's side slicing it on the snout and earning more of its ire. The wolf turned and snarled at Naruto, snapping its jaws several times before charging again. This time Naruto slammed the ring of the kanai into the wolf's forehead dazing it some. Now, Sasuke, called Naruto, jumping back from the wolf. It only took another moment for the wolf to become barbecued into a black briquette. That it? asked Sasuke. The loud cacophony of howls that followed his question was all the answer he needed. Naruto couldn't help responding. Not even close. Sasuke even grinned at that. Here they come, said Sakura, standing slightly behind the pair. Pack Hunter LBL 19 HP, 2500-2500 CP, 750-750 It's this adult is mean and vicious and will happily tear you limb from limb then eat you only to feed the leftovers to his kin. Beware both his bite and claws as both are quite effective weapons. Naruto swallowed nervously seeing six of the wolves appear at once, all of them between level 18 and 20. This was the first time Naruto thought he may have bit off more than he can chew. Naruto slapped himself once, casting off any doubts. Alright you ugly bad guys, let's party. Naruto threw the two kanai he had in hand then two quick hand seals later those two became 200 defeat all but two of the wolves but leaving them on their last legs, one of them quite literally. Finish them, ordered Naruto, an order that Sasuke was only too happy to comply with. This isn't that bad, said Sakura, who only moments later had to dodge a bolt of lightning. You had to jinx it, grumbled Naruto, searching for the target. Electric Enhanced Pack Wolf LVL 22 HP, 3000 3000 CP, 1450 1500 The expression don't play with fire may mean something to humans but chewing on electric cables is just a normal pastime for the wolves of this forest. This one apparently enjoyed it a bit too much. 
You've got to be in kidding me, groaned Naruto, stepping back defensively. What the is that thing? demanded Sakura, watching a little electrical light shows dance along the beast's fur randomly. A challenge, said Sasuke, actually grinning excitedly. Stick to the plan, said Naruto, hoping that his teammate would. Sadly, it was not to be so. Sasuke charged ahead, throwing several shuriken and kanai at the wolf, not even slowing down as he went. The wolf easily dodged the incoming metal and began its own charge toward Sasuke. Sasuke grinned as he dodged an electric swipe from the wolf. He then stabbed it in the shoulder causing some significant damage but taking a severe shock in return. Naruto leapt in and pulled Sasuke off the wolf before he ended up dead. A dozen of his clones then started attacking, one would run in and slice at it only to run back out or dispel from a shock that ped through the kanai. Sasuke shook his head a few times, he felt shaky after that shock from the wolf. I think we need to stay at range on this thing. My clones can keep its attention, we just need to put out a lot of damage on it as fast as possible, said Naruto, watching his clones attacking the wolf carefully. Explosives? asked Sakura. Probably, said Naruto, pulling out a small stack of explosive tags and handing some to both Sakura and Sasuke. Sasuke took them, taking one right away and wrapping it around the handle of one of his kanai. He then lobbed it so it landed near the wolf only to detonate a moment later, shattering the kanai into fragments of shrapnel damaging the wolf and defeat several of Naruto's clones. That works, said Sasuke, preparing another kanai. It wastes clones but I'm honestly okay with that if we can take this bad guy down, said Naruto, preparing his own kanai the same as Sasuke while Sakura did the same. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura all threw their kanai together, Naruto's landing behind it and Sakura's landing just to the side. Sasuke's hit the hind quarter of the wolf and stuck. The explosion that followed was messy and loud and left very little of the wolf behind. A special skill has been created through a special act. Kanai are great. Explosives are even better. Put them together and you've made something wonderful. Shrapnel Kanai, LVL. One has been created. Shrapnel Kanai Active LV10.00% CP, 15. By combining Kanai with Kibaku Fuda you have created a damaging area of effect attack that burns, cuts, pierces, and tears. Explosive damage 50 to 100 plus chance to cause bleed effect. Bleed damage 5 to 15 per 5 seconds. Awesome, you know, that was pretty kick, complimented Naruto, walking up to the remains of the rapidly decomposing wolf. HN, he grunted. Naruto rolled his eyes. Then he spotted a messy looking scroll left by the wolf but no other loot. Raiden. Chakra Denka no Jutsu, skill scroll neither of his teammates had noticed it sitting there and part of him was really greedy to pick it up and learn it before either of them saw it. But if he was caught it would not end well for him at all. It had a scroll on it, said Naruto, picking it up and showing his teammates. Really? asked Sakura. What is it? A Raiden technique, must have eaten one of the power station employees that had this on them, he explained, hoping Sasuke wouldn't pay it any mind. What's it do? asked Sasuke, focused on the scroll. Don't know, said Naruto. Well open it and find out, said Sakura, as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Naruto untied the string that held the scroll closed and opened it to read. Let's see. It is a Raiden technique used for self-recovery. Apparently you can use it to increase your chakra regeneration by stimulating parts of your core but doing so also damages your body. Give it to me, said Sasuke. Hey, now, I want to learn it too, said Sakura. I can maybe use it for healing. And I can use it with all the chakra I burn protecting you too, argued Naruto. He knew that something like this would eventually happen. So how do we settle this, asked Sakura. Naruto frowned, there had to be a fair way to settle a loot dispute. We could do rock paper scissors. We could fight for it, suggested Sasuke. Draw straws. Roll dice. Kill points, most kills gets the scroll. Finder's keeper, said Naruto, trying to put an end to it. Fine, we'll play rock paper scissors, said Sasuke, finding it to be the best chance for a fair distribution. Right then, on three, said Naruto, holding a closed fist on top of an open hand, a stance that was quickly mirrored by Sakura and Sasuke. One two three shoot, they all said at once. Yada, shouted Naruto, he had rocked to both of their scissors. Che, 
it wasn't even that good of a technique, said Sasuke, turning his back and walking away. He froze a moment later when another set of howls broke the silence of the afternoon. This isn't over yet, said Naruto, putting the scroll away to learn later. He then pulled another pair of kanai and prepared to fight. Sasuke jumped back to the group as soon as he heard the howl, also arming himself with his chikudo. I thought that was too easy, whined Sakura, also arming herself. After waiting a bit no wolves came. It made Naruto think this wasn't like the other fields he ran normally where the mobs came to them. This was more like training field 13. They would have to actually search out the wolves. I think we have to go to them, said Naruto, walking deeper into the training field area. Sasuke nodded and followed not too far behind with Sakura following last. It was exactly as Naruto suspected, as they traveled deeper into the field, more small packs of wolves showed up and of several varieties. It was kind of awesome in Naruto's opinion even if they were trying to kill him and his team. After about an hour of defeat their way through the field they found an entrance to a cave. What's in there? Asked Sakura, the expression on her face clearly said she really didn't want to find out. Pack leader most likely, said Sasuke. Naruto and Sakura had both noticed that Sasuke was much more relaxed than he usually was. He was even somewhat friendly. The only question was how long would it last? Naruto approached the entrance carefully, it was dark inside the cave, almost pitch black. It was suddenly interrupted by a spark of electricity before going black again. After another moment there was another spark. Naruto watched for a full minute to try and figure out what was causing the spark. Finally he saw the exposed electrical wires dangling from the ceiling. Sasuke, can you make us some torches? asked Naruto. He knew that having one hand occupied with a torch was not going to be very advantageous in a fight but it would be a necessary evil in this case. Yeah, he answered, quickly grabbing a few thicker branches and wrapping one end of them with some of Sakura's medical bandage before blowing a small breath of fire on one before handing one to each of them. Naruto took the offered torch in one hand and kanai in the other before entering the cave. The cave was maybe 2 meters tall and 5 or 6 meters wide so the trio fit easily enough but they wouldn't be jumping around much. The cave floor was mostly smooth yet littered with animal bones and even the occasional human skull. The first 20 meters in was fairly straight before veering sharply left and down. It was fortunately not much of a maze so much as just winding and twisting. They fought a handful of electric pack wolves, a weaker version of the electric wolf they fought earlier. Other than that the den was fairly empty and quiet. When they came to an area where the cave began to widen they heard the first rumbling of something much bigger. The cave widened out to a large cavern and laying in the center of it was a very large, white wolf. Shiro Okami LB 25 HP, 4000 4000 CP, 1800 1800 The, white wolf, is a beast of legend, said to be a servant of the great Okami Amaterasu. This beast is both cunning and powerful, a dangerous foe indeed. She will protect her territory even at the cost of her own life. Said Naruto succinctly. There really wasn't much else to say about it. Any ideas? Asked Sakura, shaking slightly at the sight of it. Don't die, suggested Naruto. She's sleeping, we need to sneak around her and place the torches on the ground to give us light to fight with, stated Sasuke. Then we can get at least one free swell on her before she wakes. It will have to be fast and precise to do maximum damage. Naruto and Sakura nodded and began trying to sneak left and right respectively around the sleeping beast. Once they formed a reasonable triangle around the beast they placed their torches. Naruto was able to prop his up with some rocks to give a little extra light. Naruto looked at the way the wolf was lying, trying to figure out the best way to attack it and was coming up short. He didn't know how it would attack, what kind of attacks it used or just how fast and powerful it may have been. I was not a good situation. Naruto then tried to take stock of their surroundings, the ceiling was a quite a bit higher than in the rest of the tunnel, it gave them space to maneuver. It also gave the wolf room to move. The ceiling itself was covered in stalactites, very sharp deadly looking stalactites that would make standing on the ceiling and attacking from range very difficult. On the other hand it did give him a wicked idea. Naruto pulled an explosive tag and wrapped it around the handle of his kanai which he then hurled with as much strength and power as he could muster. The kanai struck true, burying itself an inch into the stalactites directly above the sleeping wolf. 
Sasuke looked at Naruto with what Naruto could only guess was approval, he then held out a hand showing three fingers. Naruto nodded and watched as Sasuke closed one finger at a time, when he had a fist Naruto charged his chakra into the note triggering an explosion. Several stalactites fell like spears from heaven impaling the wolf several times over. Naruto was shocked to see over three quarters of her health drop instantly. When the last of the stalactites fell, Sasuke jumped in, driving his Chikudo into the chest of the wolf, pinning it to the ground. He then did a few very fast hand seals and took a deep breath. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, he all but shouted as he spewed a mib fireball from his mouth into the wolf's face, defeat it. That was stupid easy, said Naruto. He walked toward the wolf hoping to collect the loot when the wolf burst into a mist. The mist moved by an unseen wind away from the stalactites that previously impaled it before coalescing once more, reforming the wolf. Shiro Okami LV 25 HP, 3000 4000 CP, 1800 1800 Naruto swallowed nervously, they had killed it but it reformed with only a quarter of her health gone. What the is this thing? cried Sakura, jumping to Sasuke's side. Naruto joined them seeing the wolf looking very angry but not moving, simply staring them down and with each breath she seemed to spew mist that covered the ground. It was strange to see the mist spread until it covered the entire area. What are we standing here for, kill it! shouted Sasuke. Naruto ran forward first throwing Kanai and Shuriken, trying to get her attention on him. However, before Naruto could get to her, she opened her maw and swoughed several sparks of lightning into the mist at her feet. Naruto and his teammates were instantly halted as several volts of electricity coursed through them, the mist creating a natural conductor. It didn't do much damage but it did stun them allowing the wolf to charge Naruto and swipe him with her giant claw sending him tumbling end over end across the hard rocky ground, doing quite a bit of damage. She gave chase to Naruto's tumbling form but was forced back when Sasuke fired another fireball at her, not hitting but changing her course. It gave Naruto enough time to get back to his feet and prepare to defend himself against another attack. Sakura, I'll try to hold her in place, try to drop another stalactite on her. Just give me enough warning to jump clear, shouted Naruto, charging at her again, throwing Kanai and Shuriken once more. This time Naruto was able to get to her and slice into her snout, pissing her off but keeping her in one's place. Sasuke saw the merit in Naruto's plan and attacked her legs, trying to immobilize her. Get clear, now, shouted Sakura, activating an explosive note directly above the wolf. Sasuke stabbed his Chikudo through one of her paws and into the floor pinning her once again before jumping clear just in time to avoid the rain of deadly stalactites. The attack worked, dropping her HP to zero one more time. And again, she turned into mist moving away from the shinobi only to reform again. Shiro Okami LV 25 HP, 2000 4000 CP, 1200 1600 she glared at the trio again, mist began to form again. This time we need to jump when she electrifies the mist, said Sasuke. Naruto nodded but he was already at work on trying to kill the. He threw another kanai into the ceiling above her and activated it before she could set electricity flowing through the mist. She was impaled once again to feed her, despite the mist covering the ground still. Naruto was unprepared for the amount of mist to increase filling the entire cavern top to bottom. He was less prepared for nearly being barbecued when electricity coursed through his entire body, not stunning him but hurting him badly. His hit points dropped dramatically. That didn't work so good, Naruto stuttered, wincing slightly as he said it. It was a good idea, said Sasuke. We didn't know she would do that. Guys, I think I'm really hurt here, said Sakura softly. Naruto looked over to her, her HP was flashing red as in almost dead. Naruto turned back to the wolf, feeling a rage flow through him like never before. This was supposed to be a good training exercise, not a near-death experience. Shiro Okami LV 25 HP, 1000 4000 CP, 600 1600 Sasuke, protect Sakura. This is mine, said Naruto. He may have been completely calm mentally thanks to his gamer ability but emotionally it didn't change the fact that he was now really pissed off. He didn't notice his body steaming as his wounds healed. He didn't notice the slight red glow that began to encompass his being. All he saw was red. 
Naruto vanished from sight only to reappear next to the wolf and punch her in the side of the head, causing her to fly into the cavern wall. Naruto vanished again, reappearing above her, his foot raised high as he dropped down slamming his heel into the top of her head. The wolf bounced after impacting the ground, blood flying from her mouth. Naruto spun in the air and delivered another kick, this time into the wolf's side. She sailed across the open cavern, bouncing a few times like a stone across the surface of a lake before impacting with the opposite wall. Naruto vanished once more, reappearing above the wolf again, this time with two kunai in hand. He dropped on top of the wolf driving both kunai into her skull to feed her. This time she used blood but did not change into mist. Naruto huffed and puffed a few times before climbing off the corpse, the anger had vanished only to be replaced with exhaustion. Congratulations. Your level has increased by one. What was that? Asked Sasuke. What was what? Asked Naruto, honestly confused. That red glow. What was it? Naruto startled. I was glowing. You don't know. No, I was just really angry that she hurt Sakura-chan and I got really angry, he answered honestly. But now that Sasuke said it, he did feel different for that last bit of the fight. The anger he felt was his but it seemed amplified. That made him instantly recognize it for what it was. He'd used Kyuubi's power, it was unintentional but there it was. You suspect though, don't you, demanded Sasuke. Tell me, I need power like that. I suspect, it's true, but I'm not completely sure. And if it's what I think it is, it's definitely not safe and I can't give it to anyone, it's not possible, answered Naruto. Akake Jenke? asked Sasuke. Basically, answered Naruto. It wasn't exactly true but it was close enough. Anyway, we need to get Sakura to the hospital. She's hurt pretty badly. HN, grunted Sasuke, reverting to his usual arrogant self. He then turned and walked away, not bother to help or east. Naruto picked up the loot without checking it, just stashing it quickly in his inventory. He had to take care of Sakura now. Naruto got her to the hospital and they were able to treat her for the electrical burns and minor nerve damage, thanked Kami for Iryojutsu, gave them both a warning about playing with electricity and sent them on their way. That ed, stated Sakura, more than a little annoyed. I'm sorry, again. I didn't know she would do that if her attack was interrupted, he said woefully. Again, it's okay, it's not your fault and none of us knew. Doesn't change the fact that it really ed. I don't like getting electrocuted. Yeah, me either, said Naruto, his hand was still twitching slightly. Before I forget, that did drop some stuff. Really? Asked Sakura. How is it these things carry this stuff? I can't imagine they eat enough people to collect that much crap. Come to think of it, if they did eat people with money why wouldn't their digestive tracts destroy it and how is it always in such nice clean stacks? There is something weird going on here. Really? You think? Asked Naruto, scratching the back of his head nervously. I don't think it's that weird. Or Shinobi right, weird is our business, isn't it? You know something, she stated, it wasn't a question. Um, oh wow, look at the time. We should go home to bed. We should go to our own homes to bed, not the same bed or home. Right, I'm going to shut up now and go home. Hold it right there, Naruto, demanded Sakura, freezing Naruto in his steps. You are going to explain this to me right now. Naruto sighed in defeat. There's no helping it is there. Nope, none, now start talking, she demanded. Not here, it's too public, he replied, looking around the deserted street. Fine. Let's go to your place and you can explain it there, she said, walking toward his apartment building. Fine, groaned Naruto, following after her, dragging his feet a bit, unable to stop the feeling of dread welling up inside. This will not end well for me. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author. See you guys in the next video.